JavaScript is one of the most popular programming languages out there. It started as a scripting language for the web, but now you can write and run JavaScript code virtually anywhere. You can run JavaScript on your browser, on your backend server, on your desktop, and that includes your Macintosh, Windows, and Linux. Examples of some applications that are written in JavaScript are Slack, Skype, Visual Studio Code, and many, many more. Netflix and PayPal also uses JavaScript for some of their back-end of some structure. So if those are good reasons for you to learn JavaScript, it's pretty much as good as any reasons. In this video, I want to go through what I believe are the essential tools of JavaScript. This video is targeted towards programmers who never wrote JavaScript before or have basic understanding of the language. I will use the latest and greatest syntax of JavaScript as of 2019. This video is very practical. There is not much history or backstories involved. So if I am a half decent editor, you should see timestamps for each of those topics and you can seek to that time minute maybe hour, hour, minute, seconds, and go to what exactly you're interested in, the topic that you're interested in to learn. Okay, maybe you know all of these. You can jump to things that, like Fetch API, you can jump to directly to that, right? So you can do that. That's why I think of this as your table of content. You can always seek to this location, right? I'm going to add a jump code to the table of content or the outline. And from there, we, you can jump to your favorite location and just to learn. And I'm, I am myself, I'm going to use this video because, you know, we are all human. We forget, obviously, and that's why it's always good to have a quick refresher on basic concepts, right? And this is what I believe are the essential tools from being pr uh, programming in JavaScript for now three years. I, I have been coding since 1998, but JavaScript like I would say professionally for three years now, right? And I find these are the most things I use. There are a lot of things that you might disagree with and you say, hey, I use, I don't know, apply bind all the time. This is this is what I believe most people will use, right? With that said, let's go go through quickly what are, what are these things, right? If you're a programmer or you've never coded before, that's okay. We're going to learn about that today. And uh, we're going to talk about variables, obviously. Every programming language has those. Uh, talking about variables, we're going to talk about the different kind of how you declare variables. Uh, JavaScript is not a strongly typed language. That means you don't say, hey, I want an integer. Hey, I want a date. I, I don't. I want a string. You just, they figure it out for you. Conditions, if statement, trinary operators, and like that. I talk about arrays, right? Very powerful concept. I talk about JSON, which is like, I would say 80% of the web is being transferred in JSON, which is, stands for JavaScript. Object notation, forgot that for a minute now. <laughs> Functions, very powerful concept. And then the far superior arrow functions. Eh, I would say not far superior, it's just simplified, you know. We invented arrow function, Java, I would say we. JavaScript, people behind JavaScript invented arrow functions for people like us who have functions of one line of code. That's how I believe it. If you're passing functions around and most of the function has like one line of code, why do I have to add all these ugly curly braces? So there might be other reasons, but that's what I think is the reason. It's very elegant, syntactic sugar, as they say. Loops, duh, right? for loops, while loops, uh, for each. And then obviously guys, these, all of this stuff, we're gonna do a contrived example and I apologize for that. I know some people don't like contrived example, like hey, if age is greater than 18, then yeah, you can drink, bro. Yeah, so I don't know. I cannot think of it. real examples out of context. It doesn't make any sense, right? So I, I gotta make up contrived example. So I apologize for that. Exercise, I'm going to give you a real example of that. We're going we're gonna to build uh, something, all right? We're going to go to that, okay? And, and I, I think we can say it, right? We're going to build essentially a function that kind of exercise all of that, or two functions. And uh, I'm going to pause the video. You can do it, and then you can obviously see how I did it. 
it's not perfect it's not gonna be perfect you guys might do a better job than i do right but that's how programmers you okay, right it's just general what do you want to do what what is the purpose of what you're building then we're going to talk about the properties of arrays okay and then array you can do an array but you can do an array map and uh, i was very confused about what the heck is that but i started using it and it is a powerful concept you know before maps we were doing all sorts of loopy stuff map solved a lot of things and you i found myself using map a lot which is surprisingly for something you didn't know about <laughs> right it's always like that you learn you see something new you are kind of reluctant to learn it right but once you learn it's like oh my god where has this been all my life you know all right find freaking ta da right you can find stuff in an array promises very powerful concept invented because people don't like to wait right and they don't like blocking the ui so powerful concept async await kind of depend on promises kind of a little, little bit more elegant than promises but depends on promises nevertheless okay i'm gonna talk about all that stuff don't worry about it fitch api how to pull data from the internet the real stuff right query the web server pull information we made a whole video about fitch api but no harm for Right, how about we jump into that video? Alright guys, so before we get started, alright, I want you to kind of know where are you going to execute JavaScript. And this is the beautiful thing about JavaScript. If you just want to learn how to write JavaScript, right, and you like you don't have, uh, you don't have to install all these text editors or compilers or nothing right if you have a browser i have chrome or firefox you can write javascript code right now if you like you you're visiting someone and you have you have access to their machines you can write javascript on their machine okay so you can always practice javascript even if you don't have the tools to to execute javascript code because there is javascript interpreter in your browser so let's get to it okay open chrome and then go to these three dots guys Boop. and then go here more tools and then click on developer tools if you click developer tools you get to choose uh, the console and that console will allow us to write beautiful beautiful javascript code guys it's it's so good and the first thing we're going to learn about JavaScript is console.log. And what do we do for the every programming language? Hello world. I don't know why hello world. I think I think the hello world term was invented because the computer is saying hello. It's like coming to life. I think that's why uh, that's why people use like to use this because that's the first time a computer actually became alive, right? And then kind of interacted okay this is turning into philosophical debate all right hello world so that's how we print right this is the first line of code in javascript this is a function we call this a function and this is a built-in function to print stuff and you're going to use this a lot to kind of test your results right and then here's here's the interesting part guys so what we pass to this function is is what we call a string and a string starts with these double quotes Okay, and then when you do double quotes, you can write as many characters as you want inside them, and then I'll, that will print them. You can obviously, if you put up, uh, you use the upper arrow, you can just repeat the statement, and then we can do like, hello word, and then we add a plus. That means concatenate this with, my name is A2D2, whatever, that's the computer came up to love, right? And uh, you can see there's an annoying, there's no space between these two. You can just add, oh, you can just do plus space and you can just do fancy stuff, right? That's still a little bit boring, right? Not much fancy stuff here. It's just, we're working with strings, but here's the interesting part. Let's talk about variables a little bit. So if I have, um, you have a bunch of 
tax data or numbers right you can you can you can work you can print numbers you can print uh, strings and you can okay with print you can also print if you want to guys not only strings but numbers right let's say one plus one is equal to plus two and that means essentially the number two will be added here and here's an interesting part here so if you do one plus one here what do you guys expect the result will be i would expect that one will be added to one and then the result will be two right nope <laughs> computers are dumb guys right so <laughs> you have to tell it everything so what to it to the computer here to the javascript uh, compiler or interpreter if you will what happens here is you pass the string and then you pass it a number and these are incompatible types and when when the computer detects an incompatible type especially the javascript thing c++ will, will yell at you it says what the heck are you doing you're dumb human stop doing this javascript will say i know life is hard i know you have kids and uh, i don't know you're tired and you will have a nine to five so i understand so i'm gonna convert the stuff for you okay don't worry about it so what it will do is it takes the string and then just literally says a number of string to the computer to the drift script the string wins and this will be converted into a string and guess what after anything after that will be a string so this is equal as if you said this which is literally just bunch of strings right it doesn't know that these are numbers right so in order to tell the computer hey dumb computer stop doing that what you want to do is add it between parentheses so they can get evaluated first you know math right simple math if you have if you have a function in a math right and then you, between parentheses the parentheses take order and they will be evaluated first and that after that the rest of the expression will be evaluated and that's what happens right then you can do anything here like eight plus obviously you're gonna do that and then you can get the results all right guys let's jump into variables all right so if you see me do double uh, slashes like that is this a slash or a backslash no this is a slash so if you saw me like doing a slashes that means these are comments and they won't be executed by the javascript engine here's the thing let's talk about variables variables are pieces of that sits uh pieces of data that sits on memory specifically ram and uh, you can store data into them you can store strings you can store number you can store date you can store arrays javascript objects and then all these kind of stuff right so what i want to talk about is i want to talk about the difference between const and let do we have Two, forget about var, guys. Don't never use var. I know maybe you're coming from an old JavaScript. Uh, you read some some more tutorials. These are from the 90s. Don't use var. It's outdated. Const and let will give you everything that var. Plus, it's you can argue that they are more performant. Okay, we're gonna talk about that. So always use const. The rule of thumb always you if when you declare variables use const as much as possible there are limitations of const we're going to talk about so if i can i can declare a variable called age equal 18 right you can do const age equal 18 and you can print that my age is then you can plus age that sounds good why do i need let right here's the the downside of of const right you cannot assign it anything else. Jesus, who grew up from 18 to 71? All right, okay. So this guy became 71, but you cannot. It says you cannot do that. Now you can think to yourself, what the heck is that? What are these programmers doing? Why are we inventing something that I can, what's the use? Oh, of course I am always gonna reassign my variable. Guess what? I said the same exact thing three years ago. It's like, who's gonna use this cause? This is stupid. Who's going to use const? Nobody's going to use const, right? It's just, but believe it or not, from coding, every time I use const, 99% of the time, I don't reassign my variables. The only time where I use let 
where you can obviously as reassign your variable, right? So you can do age. Amanda, I don't know. Say Amanda is 19. I'm going to get in trouble. Right? So the only time you can use it is like if you want to just do this, like a call 20. She became 20, right? You can do that. And the only time you use let is in loops, right? Because you, you, you set a variable and then you increment it, increment it, increment it, right? That's the only time I use let. Sometimes I use it for modular global variables, right? Sometimes, but most of my time, it's const. Believe me, guys, just use const. But if you found out that, oh, oh, oh I, mean, I need to reassign this, right? Then use let, okay? So that's the, uh, the rule of thumb, okay? So you can do that. Let's, let's talk about uh, this inline print as well, guys, while, while we're in variable. So we talked about this. So we know that um, Amanda is what now? What is Amanda? Amanda age, Amanda is 20, right? So if you want to print Amanda's age, you can do this, like Amanda is age years old. All right, you can do that. But that's boring, guys. That's boring. That's old stuff. We are, we're all about new and shiny, babes. Let's do that. So how do we do that? You do console dot log and then so instead of using this double quotes we want to use a new kind of special coder and it's called the tick mark and you can find it on your mac i have no idea where it is in windows but in your mac you can find it under the escape button it's like where where tilde is just just literally just hit it and then you get this tick mark and then close it Okay, and this is a special thing because JavaScript will, the new versions of JavaScript will look at this and say, oh, this is a special string, right? It's not just any string. This is you're printing something. But imagine like printing something that is complicated, guys. You're going to get into a lot of, you'll add this adding plus and plus and plus. It gets really complicated and hard to read. So people invented this. Amanda is, and here's what you do. You do a dollar sign curly braces and you put your variable name in line in line baby your result isn't that hard, uh, easier to read you might argue that that's actually harder to read Hussein I'm not gonna use this and that's okay it's up to you guys but I find this way easier okay and then uh, obviously if you replace this with just this Computers are dumb, so it's gonna literally print that for you because it's a literal string, right? You have to use that quotes or text, I think they call it. All right. And Adam is age years old. So just just fancy stuff. All right, guys. So we learned about variables, kinda, right? We learned about constant let. Use always const, always, right? It's going to become, especially with this ad hoc coding that we're doing, const is going to be pain, which is kind of funny, right? Because I'm still like, you use const, but then none. Const is a pain. But when you're actually coding, because I didn't actually say why const is better than let. And the reason is when you set a variable to a value, let's say const is const name, uh, let's go Amanda name. That's kind of useless. Amanda, give me a last name. Cerny. God damn it, I can't believe I'm going to use that name. Okay. All right. All right. Amanda name is. Damn it. I... Okay. <laughs> All right. Influencers time. All right. So Amanda, right? Console.log Amanda name. Right. You can do that. Right. And then once you set it to a value, right, this variable is now, guess what? Stick to that data type. Now it knows that Amanda is a string and uh, Amanda age or age Amanda, what did you call it? Right. Age Amanda is a number. 
And this is powerful stuff for the compiler or the JavaScript interpreter. It does know it. Knowing that fact that it will not change because guess what? You cannot reassign it. You get one shot, right? It, it can optimize the, the interpreter and can optimize your code because it will know. Oh, whenever it sees age, Amanda, oh, I know it's a number, so I know what to do. It's not, it doesn't need to go and try to evaluate and read the code all over again. So it is, it is a little bit way faster than just let and var is the worst. I'm not even going to talk about it. Var, when you declare something, you set it, it is visible across all your functions, across all the global internal blocks which is kind of the worst thing you can do it doesn't have scoping which kind of give you incorrect results it can give you confusing results obviously uh, it, it is let is even better than var yes you can reassign it from var and let but with let right you can you can scope it so and and we're gonna talk about that data type let's talk about data type what kind of data types we have we have we have a lot of data types, right? We have numbers, like what we do. We have 20, 30, 7. These are numbers, right? You can do, um, let's use let here. So this is just uh, m equal. You can do a number, right? Now m is a number. You can set as, uh, you can do m equal test. By the way, if you do m, let m again, you can get an error because you cannot define it twice, obviously. Right? So M is now what? Now M is a string. You can assign M to a Boolean. A Boolean type is true or false. True lowercase. Very powerful stuff. You're going to use this a lot. True or false. And uh, sometimes you don't notice it, but this is different than a number. It's, it's actually a, a double, right? Slightly different, so a floating number. And I want to introduce also the concept of undefined. Undefined is, is, is a literal, if you will, and a keyword in JavaScript that if you don't assign anything like this, let k, right? k will be by default undefined, right? And that is a legit value. You can compare against it. You can do stuff against it, okay? Undefined has a meaning, okay? You can set... A value to null which is a completely different than uh, undefined okay it's it's good to identify those two pieces it's it's different thing and um, by the way guys const you cannot just say const o and not assign it and that's one of the reasons const is good because what if there is a const it has to has a value and it has to have uh, essentially a, a a well-defined data type, right? Once we know that it's a Boolean, then we're stuck with it, right? We cannot assign it anything else, right? We just give it an error, get an error back. All right, so those are variables. We talked about variables. And uh, let's talk about how do you ask the user for input from JavaScript, if you will. Right, guys, obviously, you're not going to write an application here. This is using as your playground to get familiar with JavaScript. And once you do, we're going to move to a, an actual I would say environment for JavaScript, and there are many environments for JavaScript. We can we can do a browser-based um, Node.js is another environment, but whatever you're gonna learn here, you're gonna apply for everywhere you write JavaScript code. And that's the powerful stuff. Okay, this is just for you to get wet, your feet wet. All right, so I can ask, I can do this. Uh, name equal. Let's so just say my name is equal prompt. That's another thing we didn't say. Enter your name. And if you do that, prompt is a function. And I would say it's not in JavaScript. It's a browser-based function. If I do that, then I'll get prompted. It says, an embedded page at the sales. Right? This is just the page name. Okay, I'm going to name my name Hussein. And here's what would happen here. That will return Hussein. We're going to set it to my name. And if I print console.log my name, right? And you can do obviously console. Here. My name is, let's use the text. My name. My name. There you go. Powerful stuff, guys, huh?
let's talk about conditions guys conditions all right so conditions are again very powerful stuff and uh they this is essentially the if statement and the ternary operator and what you can do is instead if you have multiple line of code you can execute certain code if a certain condition is true or false and that's very powerful you can use this all the time in coding so how do we do this all right so do we still have age here yes age is 18 so we can do this if age is greater than 18 right you can say greater than or equal that's how you do greater than or equal in javascript then you can do curly braces hit enter 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 close that curly braces and inside that will be the code that will get executed if that condition is true and you can ask yourself age, is age greater than or equal 18 yeah console the log parte time I can drink sweet right wait you cannot drink can you 21 isn't it 21 <laughs> wait a second this is not Amsterdam all right okay party time I can drink you you can ah, okay so let's fix this party time but I cannot drink. But wait a second. Wait, it's greater than 18. What the heck is wrong with me? Okay, it's it's still seven o'clock in the morning, guys. Give me a break, okay? I can drink. Okay, you can drink. It's greater than 18. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So if you do this, party time. I can drink. Obviously, it's gonna get executed. But let's clear this up and say, if age is less than 18, let's say. Party time, you can party, I guess, but no drinks for you, sir. If I do that, it's not going to get executed. We're going to get undefined back because the code never got into this state to execute that line. Okay. How about if, can I do both? Right? Yeah, sure. You can do this. If age is less than 18, do this. Else, else is it's just like, almost like a very English thing right you can if this then else right in this case this will be executed else anything else just go ahead and print yas queen I can drink right semicolon by the way are optional in JavaScript but I like to put them just for convenience because I'm from kind of C, C sharpy experience does that make sense guys very simple stuff let's talk about what kind of operations do you have what kind of condition what do you call it comparison operators so you, the comparison operator here is is uh, essentially you can most of the time you're going to use them in 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 the nf statements right you say if age is equal 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 20 then Right, and then you might if you if you have a little bit of JavaScript or C plus plus, you can what the heck is equal equal equal. We're gonna talk about that, guys. If you da, uh, we're gonna talk about the difference now. If you do if age is equal equal, and then console the log my age is twenty something like that. Just anything that prints, right? Obviously, it's gonna be four because what age is eighteen. Okay, if I do, it's not gonna be executed, right? But if I change this to eighteen, I'm gonna get printed, right? And here's the thing. Let's compare this, how powerful. I want you always to use equal, equal, equal as much as possible. And let, I'm going to tell you the difference now. The difference between equal, equal, you, you can get away with this. This is exactly, let's fix this. This is exactly true. That's okay, right? But the only difference between equal, equal, equal and double equal is if you do equal, equal 18, as a string remember what is age age is a number what is this this is 18 but it's a string again this come back to the computer empathizing with us and say okay it, i know you guys have kids and uh, and you're uh, you have a nine to five and you're tired and you have debts and you have credit card debt so i understand you made a mistake you i know you kind of know this this is the same so it will actually convert this data type 
to that age data type. So it will essentially just do, oh, this is 18, 18. So let's go ahead and print. And we'll say, oh, this is actually true, despite it not being the same data type. Does that make sense? This is age is a number. See, it's it's kind of in, in blue, which is kind of actually not string, right? No, it's not double coded. 18 is a string. So technically they are not the same type and you want to know your cases in this case sometimes if you're lazy he says i don't care let the computer do it for me right but if you really want to fail right if you do this then it will fail it will not execute it this is not true see we didn't get anything printed because although the age is 18 but that condition got evaluated to false because oh, i'm sorry yes this is 18 but i know you're smart right you you're a smart person you told me to do triple equal that means i also will check not only the value but the data type as well this is a string this is a number it's not equal so it's not gonna get executed so always use triple equal because you don't want this like <sighs> implicit conversion thing it's just a bad thing don't don't do it right again up to you if you can live with that because because that got, can get into nasty bugs right uh, so you have the option uh, this is equal 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 this is not equal right that means it's just if it's not equal at all right you can do that and then here's here's the powerful thing you can do not equal and uh, let's do this not equal that is true these are not equal so we're gonna print it uh you can do what else we have greater than we talked about equal 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 not equal greater than obviously less than all that stuff right guys all right so we talked about all these stuff guys coolish stuff very cool let's talk about array arrays guys arrays arrays babes let's do arrays all right so what is an array an array is a consecutive uh, uh, list of stuff that are grouped into one kind of i don't want to say object it is an object it's a one object one variable that you can play with and when i say it this way it doesn't make any sense and it says like hussein why do you group stuff together it's all and there is a good reason why you want stuff to be grouped into a consecutive thing that has like a start and an end. So let's do an array of names, right? Give me names. We're going to use all kind of names, ethnic names, white names, all kind of names, right? So we can do Alan, we can do Hussein, right? We can do, damn it, I'm the, I don't want to have stupid Amanda. Okay, I don't want Amanda. Give me another name. Lele. Okay, this is even worse. All right, give me another name. Kim. Okay, you gotta give me a male name. All right, Aladdin. Right, Aladdin. Did I spell it right? Yeah, Aladdin. Okay, Aladdin is another name. What other name? other names? Other names, guys. The Rick, Oracle Paul. All right. Nice. Okay, we have a kind of culture diverse set of names here, right? Nice. Okay. So, if you have if you print names you have seven names here and this is powerful stuff guys see so we have zero is alan one is hussein two is lele three kim four is aladdin or alaeddin in arabic that's how we pronounce it correctly five frick and six is paul babes all right let's do this so we have all these names all these arrays powerful stuff but what's the use of this so I have all of these all in one object. So we can do this. Uh, you can get to any name, but if you know the index of those, and you, you might have noticed these indexes 0, 3, 4, right? And you can get to those while doing this. Who is a race of 4? It's Aladdin because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Aladdin is 4, okay? Who is 4 plus 1? Which is five i just want to be fancy here just showing you different thing you can do with, with the programming language right what is names of what is the last one 
four, five, six. Six is full. How about seven? You get undefined. You can do add as go to a hundred and you're gonna get undefined. You know why? Because nothing is after that, guys, right? And we know that the default value of uninitialized variables is da, 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 undefined. Okay, coolest stuff. All right, so can I add more names to this? Right? This is how you initialize. You can initialize an empty array by doing that. We got unfortunately we did it as a con, so we cannot do this, but you can start an array with this, right? You can add to the array, and that's fine, right? Despite it being cons, which is kind of, you would say, if you're coming from a other program, it's just like, what the heck did you just do? Are you adding? Can you add a stuff to a constant? That's what's confusing about uh, constants. You can add to it because what constant means is actually the data type is constant. As long as you're not changing the data type, you're coolish, right? But the moment you start changing the data type, then you're gonna the JavaScript will yell at you, yell at you right? As long as you're pushing, you push another name, and that's all that stuff. We can print it. We can't go all the way there. All right, that's cool. Cool stuff. All right, so that's essentially you can remove pop. We'll remove the last element. If you pop it again, pop it again, pop it, pop it. Right, we popped all of them. Now only Kim. I'm gonna remove Lily. You can do this. Let's remove Lily, right? Let's just do this undefined. That's how you remove her, right? Now it's, <laughs> it's undefined, okay? So that's how essentially you remove stuff, okay? We're gonna talk about other properties of arrays as well, but this is how you do arrays. Arrays is not only strings, you can do arrays of numbers, you can do arrays of objects and array of believe it or not, functions, you can do array of anything. That's powerful concept. We're gonna talk about examples. Yes, these are example are contrived. I understand guys, but we have to explain something, right? I cannot give you a real life example out of context. It doesn't make any sense. I tried, believe me, I tried. Another thing, powerful stuff in array, it's called link, a property called link, which tell you how many elements are in this array currently, right? And you can do powerful stuff with it. And, uh, Here's here's the interesting thing about this, guys. If you do uh, const, do we still have the name? No, we don't have the name, right? So if I do a name equal const name equal Hussein Nasser, my name, right? Name is Hussein Nasser, and guess what? Name is kind of an array, so you can actually do this. You can actually do this. Give me the eighth, the eighth character. This is nothing but an array. It's not really an array. It's kind of an array. So if you wanted to convert it into an array, you can do this. Name array equal array.from. And then you do name. This will actually convert it for you into a literally an array of characters if you want to. Some people might find this useful. You can do this. You can convert this into an array where, where you can actually do dot array dot length right. not that not to say you cannot do this you can also do this right but there are cases that you cannot do for for example function code for each on the array on the name but you can do it on an array does that make sense guys very quick stuff all right let's jump into JSON objects babes JSON objects. So an object is a very interesting concept in JavaScript. Okay. And uh, if I do object, let's say it's called an object called user, right? And here's how you declare an object in JavaScript. Same thing. You do equal the constant. When you set it to an object, it will become an object. And has, this is how you do an object. Curly braces, close the curly braces. That's how an object looks like. That's a JSON. That's a legit JSON object, okay? Which stands for JavaScript object notation. And if you do this, that's an object. And here's the thing. You can assign properties to that, okay? You can do name equal Hussein, okay? And you can do age equal, how old am I? Jeez, I'm 36 now. Okay, you can do that. And if I print user now, look at that. The object is nothing but a collection of key values. So 
For those of you coming from Java or, or C++ or C Sharp, this is a dictionary, very similar to a dictionary, where the key is always a string, always, always a string, okay? And the value can be anything you want, okay? In this case, this is a string. In this case, this is a number. It could be a date. It could be a function, pretty much anything, okay? And that's the powerful stuff. Do you, do you see what I did? I just added a value by just assigning stuff to it. That's powerful. Okay. Do I have to do this? Can, can I set it while I'm initializing? Sure. Right. That I can do user one and I can do similar thing here. Let's, let me clear this up. Yeah. I can do this name equal uh, Edmond. You can do that. User one now it has this and then you can do const. You can do user one dot age equal 80. Uncle Edmon is 80 now today. User one. The heck am I doing? Okay, user one. Now we have this, right? You can you can be fancy. You can have a const user two equal. You can do name equal uh, Matt, right? I'm literally thinking of the people I work with. That's why I remember names. Okay, we can do age. I don't know how he's gonna get mad. I, I think he's older than 50, but I don't think he's gonna watch this video anyway, so. Age is 50. And then what else? What else, guys? Here's what I wanna do. I wanna, if if user, what, what else have users have hobbies, right? Hobbies. It's not a single value, it's actually an array, which is very interesting. We actually talked about that, right? We have an array. And then array could be like hunting, I wanna go just like, I don't know, dancing, I wanna go like dance and hunt. You can uh, play video games, all that powerful stuff. You can do user two, and guess what? We can have a value, we can array of hobbies, which is an array, you can have another object, if you will, right? That's totally no normal. You can you can think of an object that it can encompass everything. An object could be has an arrays, an object has another object, an array cannot have an object, obviously, but you can do an array of objects, which is what we're gonna do next, right? Let's do const users equal empty array and then user users dot push. We're gonna push one user, then users dot push user one then users the push user two powerful stuff prince users wow powerful stuff guys powerful stuff all right i think i think this is good this is good right so we talked about the arrays we talked about objects so we know the basics of the basics of the basic you can print by the way console.log uh Username is, and you can do obviously, guys, user dot name, right? You can do this the first user dot name, the second user dot name, the third user. I think this is Matt, right? Yep, you can you can do all sorts of things, guys. So, as an exercise, I'm gonna I'm not gonna do it, but you can do it. Try to print. Like all the properties in one, in, in using this stick, for example, try to do that and uh, just write your answers on the comment section. If you if you don't know, we we can always correct and and have a discussion on the comment section. Let's talk about functions. Very powerful concept. All right, guys, let's continue. We Next up, we have functions. Functions are powerful feature in any programming language. You're gonna use this all the time. And uh, essentially, what function is is uh, we we have written a lot of code, but it's kind of it was kind of an ad hoc, and it was like floating in the air. Functions are grouping of a bunch of code into one unit of work right think of a function usually it does one and one one thing only and it does it really well that's the 
if you will, the best practice for a function. Obviously, if you see a function that has like a 2000 line of code, then probably it's a bad function. You don't want a function to have a long, a lot of line of codes. You want it to have as minimum as possible and it has one unit of work. That being said, this is not a strict rule. If you, if you do a function that is long, try to break it down, but essentially that's what it is. A function is collection of code and you can just use it to uh, essentially perform some task without repeating the code over and over again. Okay, let's write a function that using the tools that we learned so far. I'll start with that. Okay, I want to write a function to know if the number is greater than 100 or less than 100. Kind of dumb, but let's do it. Okay, so um, function, you, this is how you create a function. Function is greater than 10 I don't know okay and then you give me a number that's the what do you call this the parameter okay right this is the parameter list you can pass parameter a, a list of parameters to the function the function has a name and it has optionally a return type okay and if I do this I can write code inside this function so I was going to start writing code okay by the way, guys, if you want to write multi-line in the console, just hold shift and enter. That will give you multi-line. Okay, so is greater than 10. How do we do this? Very simple. If the number is greater than 10, then I want this function to return true or false, essentially. We can do this. Return true. And guess what? If it's not, return false. We're going to write this function in a better way now, guys, just to show you different ways of writing this function. The version one of this function is greater than 10, and this is how you call it. You pass in a number. You get bad. Is, is, uh, is 10 greater than 10? No, it's not. It's 10 is equal to 10. So about 11, you get about, about 1001. You get true. Pass it 1. You get false. Simple stuff. Let's rewrite this function in a in a way, version two of this function. There you go. I want to write this function, version two of this function. But here's what we want to do, guys. So you can do an F statement, and that's fine. And that's not wrong. But if you think about it, this is actually this is an expression that actually returns true or false. Number greater than zero is actually, it's an expression that returns a Boolean. So let's let's talk about this a little bit. So if I do like a, a number, let's say, let n equal 10, and I do n is greater than five, see? I actually give back a Boolean. If I do less than greater than five, I do this. If I do equal, equal, equal five, that's too many equals. <laughs> okay, I get I get back a boolean. So can I write this function in a way so that can I just do this? I can. I should. Right? I should, because what will happen here is this will be take the number. If the number is greater, then that will evaluate to true. And that will say return true. Okay, and has, that's how we do, right? And then return, if that the value is false, gonna return false. And any code after return will not be executed, guys, all right? So you have to really understand this concept with functions, right? Once you see return, you cannot write any code after that, except if it's like in, in, a, in an F statement block, all right? So now I can use the version two of my function and test it out. What? what works seems to be working that's pretty cool right and uh let's let's do let's do this guys let's write another function called is even is even and is even will be take the number and tells you if it's even or not even steven and uh to do if, to know if it's a number is even is we use a, a condition that actually didn't i didn't tell you guys but it's called number modulo 2 right if the number modulo 2 is equal equals 0 that means there you divide 
and the remainder is zero, go ahead and return what? True, it's meant, it means it's even, right? Else, return false. You can do it this way. I just, I just try to give you multiple ways of doing things, right? So if I do is even to, if I can write, hey, 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 that's pretty cool. That should get executed all the time. That's pretty cool. We can use the ternary operator. That's right. Function is even version two. Let's do the ternary operator. How about that? We can do that. We can do number equal equal zero, which is kind of useless if you think about it, guys. Right? We can do this. Just return the whole thing, right? And uh, what will happen here is beep. we can return the whole thing, right? I don't think we need this expression. So here's what we do. We talked about ternary operator, right? So uh, check that value. If, uh, if that value is true, execute this, else execute that, right? And what will happen is if it's true, you're gonna go here and return true the true will be substituted with the whole thing. If I do false, then the whole thing will be replaced with false and so on, right? So let's try this. Is even version two, babes? 100, is it 100 even? What? Why is it? Why did you yell at me? Oh, I didn't spell even correctly. Is even Steven? All right. My function is solid, guys. That is solid stuff. All right, so we talked about some functions. Can we do this, guys? I want to talk about a function that essentially is very interesting. It's called the timeout, set timeout. Okay, and set timeout is a function. You can see that I returns as a function that essentially execute code when a certain time is elapsed. What I want to do here is. I want to write a function that runs after five seconds. Can I do this? Let's try that. So let's write a function that is called, uh, I don't know, print uh, function print time. And then what it does is literally console.log prints the current date or current, the current date. And you, this is how you print the current date, essentially, a new date. You create a new date. And then if I do a print time, I get the current time, but I want to execute it after, I don't know, five seconds. So let's do that. So, so here's how you do it, right? You do set time out, right? You call this function and you tell it, what do you want to execute? Okay. And what function do you want to execute? I want to execute print time and you pass it. You don't invoke it. You just pass it right as an object. Okay. If you pass this function and then you say, Hey, execute me after five seconds. 5,000 milliseconds, all right? If I do this and wait, one, two, three, four, five, that code was executed after five. Pretty cool-ish stuff, right? How about if I want to print the time after, let's say after three seconds, each two seconds, I want to print the time, right? We can augment the print time method, right? To print the time. But after it brings the time, it calls sit time out, right? And then calls itself back, which is kind of recursive if you think about it. And after three seconds, right? Powerful stuff. So what will happen here is that I just declare the function. I never call it, but call it once, execute it. And what will happen is we'll print the time and we'll call this set timeout after three seconds we'll call it again which will then trigger another timeout which will call it again and so on forever let's do it one two three and one two three and one two clear and uh, two three and proof and you get it right you get it guys this is this is how you do set timeout it's powerful stuff sometimes set timeout you want to Pass it parameters, and this is where closures get into the pictures, and we can do powerful stuff with it. All right, guys, let me refresh this page because this is gonna get annoying, right? If you refresh the page, then the whole thing will just go away, right? It will not that function just, bah, I think, yeah. So now let's talk about auto.
auto functions. Auto functions are just a fancier syntactical sugar of the current function, but they are kind of cooler because they just very compact and, and, and easily readable, in, in my opinion. You don't have to use them. This is the new stuff. You can pass in interesting things with this. It becomes really interesting when you use array function, especially when you have a single line of code. A function that returns a single line of code, the perfect example is to use arrow function for those. And we wrote some of them, right? Is even is one of them. Right, so let's rewrite is even as a. Um, do you guys remember right? is even? That's how we did it. Number, that's how we do it. We can do return uh, number modulo to equal 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 zero. Right, you can even be fancier and just return that if you want to. Okay, so that is our function. I want to rewrite this, but as an auto function. To do that, this is how you do it, okay? It doesn't make sense in this console, but you can actually create a function called is even to version two equal. This is the auto function. This part is the auto function. You, the parameter comes first, and if, the param if it's a single parameter, you don't have to do parentheses. This is optional. You can do this if you want, right? But if it's a single parameter, you can do this. And then literally, you don't say return because if it's a single parameter, then we're going to assume that you want to return that. Okay. So you do this number modulo two equal, equal, equal zero. Okay. And just like that, this is called an arrow function. Okay. A little bit confusing, might be confusing. But if, uh, if you do this, works, works, works. Okay. Let's use our own set timeout, right? And then let's say I want to do an arrow function to call this function after five seconds. Let's do that. Okay. How do I do that? Let's print. Here's way to do it. Okay. Let's do multi line here so you guys can see. My function doesn't take anything. I want to print the date every five seconds, right? If I do this, I don't have anything. I have no parameters, so you can you have to put an empty string, and then you can literally just do console dot log new date, and we wait for five seconds. Five seconds is too long, but eventually it will execute. Obviously, you can also have auto functions have multi line. So, for example, it can do sum equal sum two equal let's say a and b and then you can do a plus b right so you can do some two one and two and you get three six and five and you get 11 right i know contrived examples but it gives you the idea we're going to go into an actual hopefully useful example at the end of the, the videos or the exercises right you can do you can do multi lines if you want to, right? Sum three, A, B, C, right? You can do that. Console.log, you can print them, right? Ah, let's do it again. Shift, I have to do shift, enter to do multi line. Console.log, B console.log c and then you have to say return now guys otherwise it won't return the moment you do multi lines you have to specify the return type okay and some three is already <laughs> declared so let's do it again let's do some three version two okay so some three version two is let's say 10 10 10 right and you can see that it works we printed all the values and then we return the value. Okay. All right. So we have our. All right. So we have our functions. We talked about that stuff. Let's get into the loops, guys. Loops. Loops are interesting, guys. Very, very, very interesting. Okay. And loops essentially. 
This will be the last part before we jump into the exercise, right? Loops will, will kind of glue all of this stuff that we learned together. And uh, the most interesting part of a loop is for loop. And you're going to use this most of your time, except in an array. You're going to do for each all the time. And we're going to give you an example now where auto functions shine, right? So let's do this. For, I'm going to print numbers from 0 to 10. Okay, to do that, now we have to use let, guys. Let i equal 0. Start from 0. This for loop has three parts. The first thing is the initialization. Where do you start? It will execute once. This is the second part is the conditional that will be checked after, after each loop. And the last one is actually essentially the incremental part, right? So you can do i equal i plus 1, which means add 1 to i. This could be also replaced by i plus plus it is exactly equal to each other i plus plus that means add one to the to i and then save it to itself okay and then i can do console.log i right print it i think printed all the numbers sweet if i do for i and then i say for example i can get rid of these curly braces because i have one line of code and that will work as well Right? If I have multiple line of codes, right, then I can I can definitely add the curly braces. It's up to you guys. Okay. So you can do like console.log i and then you can do like console.log i plus one. Okay. So it kind of prints it twice if if you will. Uh, kind of powerful stuff. This is a loop, right? So what will happen is you start from here, right? And then checks, is i is, is 0 less than 10? Yes, go ahead. Do this, execute 0, right? And then go to the next loop and then add 1. So now y is 1 and then check. And then keep adding and check, adding and check, adding and check. So very s useful stuff. All right, guys. So this is how we do a loop, right? So if you want to print certain numbers, you can, you, can, you can have a condition that loops through a certain number but here's where you actually use it most of the time so let's go back to our names hey it remembers that let's use that <laughs> our our array remember guys if you if you watch the arrays so this is our, our array so i want to print all my names here how do i print them okay you can do this for let i equal zero while i is less than names dot length right because i want to loop through all the indices or indexes and then what i want to do is literally console dot log names sub i right so what i want to first name sub zero sub one two three four five and, and so on okay we printed all the names kind of boring okay how about we print all the names that are that has a length of more than three letters right so we don't want kim into the list right so what we do is like if name sub names sub i dot length the length of the name is greater than three then print it otherwise just skip the whole thing all right name sub i let's do that so what i'm gonna print it we're going to print Alan, Hussein, Lele, right? Because it is greater than four. But we skipped Kim, right? Kim was there. We skipped it because it's not, it's not greater than three. Makes sense, guys. Makes sense, right? So let's say I want to loop and um, find the name that is, for example, Hussein, right? I want to find Hussein in the list, right? How do we do that? We can do this if names sub i equal 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 hussein then i want to basically uh print the index of that right we can do found hussein in index let's use text uh name and in index i that's pretty cool Hey, found Hussein in index one, right? But here's the thing. After you find it, we kind of wasted some cycles. We found it in the index one, but remember guys, 
We found it here, but we kept doing looping through all of this, which is kind of useless. So to do that, to break the loop, right? How to break the loop? To break the loop is you literally use the word break. Very hard, huh? After you find it, you don't want to waste time and go and cycle you can just break the loop it doesn't make it will not make any difference but it will speed up your processing essentially if there's like a million by the way guys i, I hear these in kind of interviews where people say what if you have like a million elements in your array how do you write your sort function okay these are all contrived examples and and, and really weird right you how how do you have a million how did you get a million elements in your array in your memory first it doesn't make any sense to me right usually when you work with these kind of things it's it's in the database it's in this somewhere and you want to search you want to search incrementally right while populating your array into memory you would have done the search then anyway this is not our topic but but yeah if you have a, a large array you're searching a large array with which makes sense, obviously, we're not talking about millions, but essentially you want to break. Sometimes you want to break the loop. Return, if you're on a function, return will do the same thing. Well, return will break your loop, essentially, right? We'll break the whole thing and just terminate the function altogether. Makes sense, right? Sweet. All right, so let's, let's we're going to learn a function called find that actually exactly does that for you and you don't have to do it. All right, so here's a function in loops kind of related to loops but it's in the array so if i do names dot for each it's a function in the array that takes a function which is kind of interesting but that function will be executed for each element so it's up to you what do you want to do so i want to pass in a function right and it takes one element, which is that's the element that's being being processed. And here's what I want to do, because this is out of this is where our functions are powerful, guys. I want to do this. I just write the loop that printed all elements, just like that, guys. You can do that. So how this works? What we'll do if you do for each, you pass it a function, and JavaScript will do the loop for you. And we'll call your function for each element it finds. So what it does, like it loops through the first element, it called your function, it passed Alan, and then you said print Alan. So it was just literally printed Alan, right? That's what it did. The second one, you print it. Third one, print it, and so on, right? And you can literally have the, for example, element, let's say, let's do this, right? If E dot length is greater than three then console.log so what this will do guys it will print only names that are greater than so kim is not printed in this case right makes sense guys so you can do fancy stuff with this right and uh here is another thing like a kind of uh, brain teaser what does this do guys what do you think this does give me some time here to think but Here's the thing, the function that you passed, console.log, if you think about it, it's a function, right? Console.log is a function that is, happened to be built in, and it takes a parameter and it's printed. So you can actually achieve the same result with this, and it's gonna print the same result, but it's gonna be confusing, right? Because what it's printing is it's printing not just the element, but it's passing the array as well you're going to get way more information than this, right? So what happens here is you get three parameters. So what JavaScript does, it passes you actually three parameters, not just one. Okay, it passes the actual element, passes you the index if you want to, and it passes you the entire array every time. So you can do, and if you do a console, you're going to basically print everything for you, right? So... One last thing I want to discuss is, is dates, right? It wasn't in the agenda, but I wanted to add it. Dates essentially is one of these things that I use all the time. And 
the most important thing let's let's declare a date here from date this is what my number one use case here if you want to take the difference between two dates right and um, print how long a function took or uh, like uh, how long does the, did a function took right so you can do this equal new date right from date and then you can do to date equal new date let's wait for a little bit so some seconds passes and then you can do this from date dot get time and this gives you this huge number which is the time since 1970 i think it's called epoch all right and then you can do get time and guess what if you do to date dot get time minus from date dot get time what do you get guys you get how long it took you between these two times since you stamped those and if you divide this if you divide this by a thousand that's how you do divide by the way guys in javascript then you get this number in seconds so it was 10 seconds right so let's do some function here a long function and then it does literally a loop for let i equal zero i is less than i don't know ten thousand i plus plus and then it does i don't know just i minus minus just slows things down right this this will be this will be an infinite function that's wrong <laughs> so let's do i don't know let's just let's just do this right and just just bigger and bigger number okay and that is what i want to do i want to do const from date equal new date get the time before and then const to date get the time after and then console dot log function talk and then you can do from date dot get time minus to date dot get time and then you can do divide by thousand and then we can close this thing and then whew, and let's try this long function took minus two because that's wrong guys what well, we did we should do two time before that's wrong we did something wrong guys something bad it's two date minus from date right and then you do a long function took three milliseconds that is so fast how can we make this function slower i want to make this function slower long function Ooh, made it slower let's make it even more slower oh that's just gonna be exponentially slow now Ooh, 0.56 still fast though looping through these numbers is not as bad because you're not doing any computation even slower uh oh oh uh, actually it's starting to feel it we feel it it's a half a second yikes all right Yikes. All right, guys. Time for an exercise. Here's what we want to do, guys. We want to build two functions, guys. We want to build a function called is prime, right? Think about it, guys. I wanted to build a function is called is prime and a function called get primes less than, right? And uh, you pass it a number. So what, what these functions do, what these two functions do, which is is prime, pass it a number, right? And get primes less than number. What these two functions do is the first function, you pass the number, it is gonna tell you if it's a prime number or not. And you guys know what a prime number is. A prime number is, the, is a number that only is divisible by itself and one. It's not cannot be divisible by anything else, right? So, and that's how that's how what a prime number and and it's a very compute heavy operation to find if a prime number is is a, is a prime or number is a number is prime or not, right? 
and uh, get primes or less will use technically this function to kind of loop down to all the function to all the numbers and find the numbers that are prime right it's okay write them try to write them i'm gonna write them in the most inefficient way and that's okay we're just practicing and try to make it faster and faster and use these functions the date functions that we learned to 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 to, to see the how long our functions take right so you can pause the video here exercise this and then continue and see how the function how i did the functions all right obviously there are many ways you're gonna be you're gonna find many many ways that people way better than me wrote is prime right the prime numbers right it's a it's a huge part of computer science right? it's using it's diffie hellman and tls prime numbers is used in everyone's software engineering but it's kind of under the cover uh, so that will be our simple exercise guys again a little bit you don't run into these on a daily basis but again we'll tell, give you the idea of javascript here all right guys if you're watching here i'm gonna start writing these function okay guys you can always pause and go back to this and learn okay so function i'm gonna write a function called is prime it's gonna take a number and it's gonna return a boolean right so true or false so here's how i will write this function and uh, you can optimize this as much as you want right but i'm gonna write it in the worst way and the reason is because i want i want it to take time because i'm gonna use the same bad function for promises to convert this into a promise and an async await right so don't use this in production right so here's here's how we're gonna do we're gonna loop let i equal we're not gonna test against essentially we're testing against then we don't need to test against two from two while while the i is less than number we don't need to test against the number itself right okay what we're going to do if the number is divisible by the by any of these numbers then it's not a prime right and here's what you do how do you know if it's divisible very simple you do f number modulo i equal 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 zero that means it is not a prime return false immediately okay and you can do here return true if you survived here and you came here and you then you're definitely a prime if you jumped into one of this into this condition and you succeeded in this condition then you're not a prime let's give let's take an example let's take eight right eight start from two is eight divisible by two yes right so boop return for this not a prime that makes sense right so let's try it let's test it out prime is two a prime yes is three a prime yes is four a prime no is 11 a prime yes let's do something else is a thousand a prime no and and so on guys right so we wrote a function that does a prime sweet let's write the other function which is get primes less than number okay so i'm gonna take a number and here's the interesting thing right this will be the slowest function of them all and we intentionally built it slow the reason we're building it slow is because we're going to use it to 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 demonstrate synchronous versus asynchronous later okay so keep this function handy and then obviously we're going to loop right so for let i is equal number from the number as actually we're going to start from the number minus one and while the number is greater than one i minus minus so we're kind of flipping it right let me do it again you kind of flip it in mm -hmm. and then you do that what do we do guys so i is equal to number equal to minus one and then we're looping for each of these we're gonna test if is prime i if i is a prime then we need to kind of add it to some sort of an array right we need a collection of these primes right so let's declare a, 
an array called primes here. And then if the is prime equal 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 true, we can do it this way. Or you can just remove it altogether because that works too, right? Remember, guys? If that's true, if it's a prime, then go ahead and push primes. Did I spell that right? Primes dot push. That didn't work for some reason. That's weird. Primes dot. Oh yeah, that's that's probably All right. So if that's true, then primes dot push. I'm gonna push i. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna do. I is equal to number minus one. I is greater than one. Decrement i. Okay. Start from the number and go go down. Right. So because the number is well. We're going, we're going through all numbers below that, below that, right? So we're starting from there and then going down. Okay? And while i is greater than 1, continue, 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 continue until we find all the primes, essentially, okay, that are less than. And 2 is always going to be there, 5 is always going to be there because if, if you pick a large number. Once you have all the primes, you just literally return primes, right? Let's see if this function works, guys get primes less than 100 whoa that's actually powerful stuff all of these are primes guys if our function is correct i think all of these are are primes right 61 is a prime 59 is a prime right 100 is not bad but how about 1000 Wow, my function is fast, guys. And we're going to return an array. This is how just br they breaking the array in Chrome, right? That's powerful stuff. Look at that, guys, right? 10,000. Uh-oh, it's thinking. Oh, look at that. It's how slow. I want to print the time, guys. Let's rewrite this function. So it actually allow us to write the time const from date call new date and then right after i return this all of this to const to date equal new date and then i'm gonna return i'm gonna print it console.log talk you I'm gonna be fancy a little bit here, guys, and then uh, do some certain things. And and don't don't feel bad that if you don't have exactly like my function, your function might be even better than mine. All right, as long as it gives the correct result, that's what matters. All right, that's what matters, guys. You, if you find anything wrong, let me know in the comment section so that we can correct it. Right, but I think it's everything is coolish there. But it took uh, da, 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 so we do to date right dot from uh, get time Boop. minus from date dot get time it give me the time and then let's do uh, let's do it in milliseconds why not because milliseconds is actually good right and then let's do get primes less than ten thousand hundred thousand uh oh uh oh uh oh it took two seconds to give me that result right uh, usually, guys, printing things is not as useful. Printing is just for logging, right? But if I got back the results, if you give me primes, please tell me more information. I want more information. I want, for example, uh, we're going to augment this to make it like a beefy function, man. What uh, I want is I want you to tell me how long it took is in the result. I don't want to string parse the, your, your print statement, right? What I want to do is actually get the result back as part of the result and find the time. So what you, what you can do is let's rewrite the function here. And instead of printing, guess what, guys? I want to make this. Here's what I want to do. I want to return... I'm not going to return an array. I'm going to return an object. And you can do that because it's it's an object. It's a JSON object. And you can say, total, uh, we're going to still give you the primes as an array, which is primes. But I'm going to give you another property, which is useful for you. Total time, which is what? 
it's exactly this, right? What other thing can you be useful? I can think of something. We can choose like, uh, we can say what's how many iterations we did, right? That's kind of cool as well. How, how many how many primes did we find? Again, okay, you can argue that primes dot length will give you that, but you can add more and more properties here. So let's stick with these two. These two is, seems to be okay. Now, if I get good primes less than thousand, look at that. I get back an object, and I get back the time, and I get back the prime. So some met more metadata and that's where javascript became really powerful because you cannot just return and this is i find a problematic with prog all programming languages where you have to return types are very strict it says hey you can only return you have to specify return true or false or or array even arrays is very complicated to return but now just return an object and you can change it very flexibly you can do that okay and uh I want to modify the is prime function, my is prime function guys, right? To to not return just true or false, but to actually return an object. If it's returned true, right? I'm gonna return this. I'm gonna return an object, but and this object because is prime, and this is gonna be true in this case. But here I want to return how many times did we uh what what element broke you if um if it's a prime if it's not a prime what element actually broke you okay so in this case I, i'm gonna explain that <laughs> now guys in a second right so in this case return is true as as an object kind of useless here but here's it was useful right i'm gonna return if if it's false tell me what actually was divisible right because i find myself when working with prime numbers is what actually is i so okay it's false but what was the problem what element that divisible divisible i think i misspelled it but who cares i what is what broke you right in this case because that's i is what broke you in this case, you return that and then poo immediately. That's what uh, elements divisible, right? So you get this element. So you can actually get the objects of different schema, right? And that's what a lot of people complain about JavaScript because you don't have a construct schema. That's why we're, we're especially when you return JSON, there is no defined schema. That's why people invent uh, Facebook invented GraphQL to have a well defined schema because sometimes it's powerful to have flexibility but sometimes you really need to know schema uh, protocol buffer solve this problem graphql kind of solve this problem as well right at least while sending information so as prime we did it can we get works it's divisible by two divisible by two divisible by 17 that's actually pretty fun nice divisible by three Oh, divisible by 17, 18, 2, 17. If you can think about it, these numbers are divisible by. What? Look at that, 53. It's actually executes. I hope you see this grayed out, guys. I'm going to record this in 4K, so you should see it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, it's thinking. It's thinking. How is this divisible by two? That's impossible. That's just wrong, guys. That doesn't make any sense. That's not divisible by two. That's definitely not divisible by two. I don't know what's going on here. Did I break the function? <laughs> what happened? Ooh. We're getting a divisible by two. How is this divisible by two? That's impossible. I think it's getting approximated. And because it's getting approximated, it's, it's giving you incorrect results. Like an, it's like, it's like flooring it. That's what's happening. 
Uh, if you could put in large number, this is a huge number. You should probably not do that, <laughs> right? Okay, so get prime. Let's let's do our, redo our get primes list then. Where is it? All right, guys. So we change back. We need to change our get primes list then function to is prime. And if I do this, I go get primes list then thousand, and I can see that there there is all these beautiful arrays. All these elements are prime. Looks like it, right? Looks like they are prime, right? Well, let's check. Let's pick one of them. It's a proven prime. All right, so it is, it is a prime, okay. So we didn't do anything wrong, hopefully. All right, guys, that's the exercise. We learned about our... We learned about objects, we learned about functions, we learned about arrow functions, we learned about all that fancy stuff, dates, right? We did an exercise, right? And I am, I think we are ready to pass in and do da -da -da -da, array maps. Right. So why would you need an array of maps? Okay. And uh, an array of maps how why would you need to use a map right what's a map first mapping is essentially is is to change the state of something to something else you map it right you map this to this like it's almost like a dictionary right and uh, you i find myself actually personally using this map function a lot right and here's here's a an example okay let's build an array of users right i'm gonna build an array of users and these users are actually a bunch of objects so you can do this right let's say i have a name right i'm gonna build it right now maybe i cut, I cut the video so hussein is a user right another name right bunch of users Ah, I should call it users. Sure, we still can do this, I guess. All right, we have users. We have users, guys. What if I told you to, like, give me, print me, print me those users, right? User names only. We we learned that, right? So for each, you, and then literally do console dot log uh, you dot name i'm in, only interested in their names right and you can do that and you can what if i told you that i want to work with an array of only names and you will so you don't want an array of objects but you want an array of only the names and guess what you will need that sometimes you get back from the rest endpoint you're gonna query rest endpoint you get a big get a back back a bunch of objects but you're interested in into the array of just certain pieces of information and here's where this becomes powerful so if you want just the array of names maybe you want to you want to filter them you want to print them or you want this just the array of ages and you can do it like a normal distribution kind of a thing right you can you map becomes really powerful okay and ma what map will do is will essentially convert your array into a brand new array but exactly the same number of elements but the content is different for each element based on a mapping function that you pass all right so let's let's uh let's try this right i want to create a usernames right of this right so usernames only to do that you do users.map and you pass in the function that actually what do you want to do for each element right for each element i want the name that's it and what this will do is it will stop building for each element the first element remember guys it's uh, the the object it takes the object you pass in the object e is an object now Give me the name and then create a new element array and insert that value there and then move to the next one and do the same thing. And guess what now? We have an array of strings, 
right? It might not be useful right now, but believe me, you will have uh, certain cases where you want just the pure certain parameters. There is a lot in that object, but I want only that list, all right, of names, or maybe just the ages, const user ages. Let's say you want to do a normal distribution or something. You can do this, e, e dot age, and that's where arrow functions become powerful guys right and then user ages and then you get the ages and then you can do certain cool stuff with this right so that's essentially uh, the map function guys very powerful stuff right let's do the find remember guys let's do array guys let's do array find yeah so we can do users dot find and then what this will do is like okay find me the element the user that has the name hussein right that's what it does and it will return you the object that's powerful stuff it's gonna return you the element that satisfies this condition element or element element essentially one element so if i say for example give me all elements that are for example has the name greater than three you still get the first one only right in order to get all of them you use filter okay and that will give you more than one element if you're interested in the first one you do find right if you are interested in all of them um, then you do filter essentially so find is kind of faster than and uh, filter right Let's... and let's talk about now synchronous versus asynchronous right guys so i have a function here that's called is prime and you're gonna give it a prime number and it's gonna tell you if it's a prime or not and i <laughs> looked up a number a prime a bad enough large big, uh, big number and then i beep, literally use that and it's going to tell you how long so if you notice that after i call this function i kind of blocked i have to wait until i get results back right so i cannot write anything my function is kind of blocked until i get the result and that kind of execution is called synchronous you call the function and you wait you cannot execute anything else so let, let's let's write a function as an example test right and here's here's what we're gonna do console.log first test right and then i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna do literally copy and paste and paste right second test third test and then fourth test final right so here's how synchronous code works guys okay if I do this function, I call it, look at that. We got the first come, first test, but we have waited, then second test, then third test, and then final test, right? It was synchronous. You know? Because what, what happened here is we told the function to we execute this function, and then we executed the first print, and then we called this, and we have waited. We kind of stuck here. And then after that finish we go we moved here and then we printed and then we moved and then we kind of move into a sequence kind of a thing right it's just, so it's very synchronous that's the synchronous one all right guys so we can write the same function but in an asynchronous manner kind of trick the system to do that and we the way we do it is like we do this prime async and then we pass in the number and then we pass in what we call a callback number this is the kind of the ancient way of doing things right we still we still some functions still do this but essentially you pass in what do you want and then you tell the function hey do your thing please do your thing in an event loop once you're done please call this function and give me the results i want to go ahead and do my other stuff i'm busy right so don't bother me and uh, do your thing okay so here's what we do to do it like one of the way that I found hacky way of doing it is do the set timeout right and then what you do is initially you call you give it a function and that function will basically call back the result because callback is a function and then you pass it the normal is prime which is happened to be synchronous right and then you pass it the number and here's the thing guys 
you can execute this immediately. Don't wait any, it's like zero millisecond, and go ahead and execute that. And then I'm gonna print console.log, hey, executed function, I'll let you, I'll let you know when I'm done, right? And here's the powerful stuff. Now if I do is prime async and I pass in the prime number, I didn't have to pass in a function that calls it back. Console.log is a perfect function because it's a, it's a function that prints stuff, right? I can do that. And then immediately I get a result. Hey, executed function, I'll let you know. And after a few seconds, after it's done, it gets actually executed my function and I got the results back. So let's go ahead and modify my original test function. Remember this, guys? And move it to async, right? And see what, what, what kind of result do we get back, console.log, right? Uh, change this to async. Maybe I should keep this, right? And then call this function test async. How about that? That's even better, right? And this way we keep both of them. Right, and this is essentially this is the async version of the function. I know, guys. Right, there's a lot to do here. I know this could be overwhelming, but this is useful stuff, right? So what we're gonna do here is call console.log. Again, always let me know in the comment section if you want to learn more. Or if you're confused about any point, I'll happy to help. All right. So test async. Let's test again. One more. Let this synchronize. First test. Second test. Third test, let's do it again, let's do it again. Test, clear, clear, okay, first test. Second test, right, we, it's a synchronous way, right? Function writes this, right, remember how, how, how test looks like? It's just literally synchronous, but let's try the async version of this. It's an immediate execution of everything, but guess what? Now we're getting back the results. We get first, hey, executed second, third, final and immediately after that we'll finish the function but we're still getting results back of the actual function let's do it again all right test async look at that we got all the print statements immediately so we could actually do work while this is actually working for us on the background that's remember guys javascript is a single threaded application it's a one thread but there's this powerful concept called the event loop which just kind of loops and checks for callbacks and all these results so that's essentially what synchronous versus asynchronous and uh, it's a powerful concept however this model is ugly having to pass a callback function for it to come back so that's why we invented dun, 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 dun. promises you sent something You send something and you tell me, hey, tell me if you are finished, right? And promise me that we're gonna give me a results back, right? If not, then if you succeeded, call this function. If you failed, call this function. It's kind of like a callback, but it's way better. How about we do some promises, guys? Promises stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite my is prime function. But this time, well, I can reuse the function as prime, the powerful stuff. But I am going to write it in, an, in, a, that, in a way that returns a promise. So I'm going to write a function called is prime promise. We can call it async2 as well, right? And here's the same thing. It still takes a number, but it doesn't return the result. It actually returns a promise of a result. Some, people, some programming language calls it the future. Okay, is prime promised, right? Promised. It's like, like that. It's prime promise, promise bay. Okay, so here's what it does the function immediately return a result. Immediately. Always like that. Okay, I find myself, guys, with promises, consuming promises more than actually writing promises. That's my experience. So whatever we're about to do right now, I rarely do. And I think you're going to rarely do, right? But consuming, you're going to consume a lot more promises functions that are already built in. Like fetch API is a promise base. Okay. And uh, here's what we do. We're going to return a new promise. And then this guy, 
actually takes a function. The promise takes a function called resolve and reject. Okay. Let's close this correctly. Here's what I do. It takes a function. It returns a new promise, right? A brand new object of a promise type and then closed it. This is the end of the statement. That's one line of code. And that guy is the function and your function will immediately get executed. And here's what you want to do. Okay. You want to succeed. All right. If you if you want if you if your code succeeds you want to call resolve and pass in the results if your code res failed for any reason you can call reject right in the case of the promise it's kind of always succeeding except there are some cases where you want to reject that case like i don't know certain certain things like if a number is too big you want you don't want to bother actually checking for a prime so we can do that but let's let's just do the resolve case now and we can do it very easily. We either do resolve and pass in the function immediately and pass in his prime and then pass in the number, right? And that will basically return the object and pass it the resolve and that will give us the results. But here's the thing. If the number is greater than, I don't know, very huge number, something like that, then I'm gonna say, sorry, I'm gonna reject you saying that like you can literally say anything you want here and they say uh error message you can specify an error message saying number too large for my machine to crunch right you can do anything you want and you can do else if it's less than yeah i can deal with that i'm gonna go ahead and execute that and that's it that's how we do promises and then let's do let's try this is promise is prime promise let's try this how do you consume a promise guys is is actually interesting if you do is prime promise if you pass in the number where's our fancy number what is our fancy number this is our fancy number that's our fancy number let's do it that is prime promise if i do that and pass in this number what are you going to get back is actually a promise that is resolved right but it's kind of useless guys because what happened here is you didn't actually do anything for it it gives you the result and give you the, that it's resolved and that's the value right but how do you play with it to play with it you have to do it this way right you do console uh is prime promise and there's a property called then on the object and you can immediately con consume it and that takes a function and most of the time you're going to use an arrow function let's say it takes the value results r and then let's just get okay, succeeded right so print the r immediately just print right and if it fails you want to go call the catch which is the reject cases right and then you can do like uh, things like console dot uh, log or error says something wrong happened and you can just do like i don't know e dot json dot stringify e right you can just print that thing Boop. let's try that what do we get back we get back a resolve to our promise because what happened here is we exit we run this and then immediately we got this executed okay let's give it a number that is so, so bad that is just gonna yell at us immediately see, see something wrong happened error number too large for my machine to crunch All right so you can you can see that this is how we can do deal with promises so let's do our function test again right remember I guess there you go is this function let's do a promise test but instead of calling it as prime I'm gonna call it as prime promise and then I am going to literally pass it this and then do then you can do it this way or you can do it this way as well dot then console.log that's another way you don't have to pass it an actual arrow function you can just pass it console.log which actually prints it and then if you're if you're not satisfied you can pass it console.error that's another function that prints a nice error right and uh, let's try this guys let's try this so if i'm gonna pass it here and then do it again here and then do it again here what do we get all right guys so we have the function 
which tests our promise nice function, right? But you can see that's a little bit ugly, right? We're gonna fix this with async await. Uh, but let's test that out. If I do a test promise now, what happens? Look at that. It is still kind of synchronous in a way, right? Because the way we executed our function that is called test uh, is promise, what we did is immediately, if it's prime promise, we will call that and technically we will immediately call this. So if you want a true asynchronous way so we can all call in the same time, you can do that and you can kind of trick the system by having it instead of resolving immediately and call the function which kind of will mini block you what you can do instead is do a set timeout like we did later right and then instead whenever you're ready immediately call that and then so if you want to do that if you don't want to execute that you call a function and that function will call essentially resolve for you and that resolve is calling the number is prime. Oh, we forgot to close this function. Right? So now, if I do test promise again, look at that. Everything got executed, and now I'm getting back the results, right? So my code is unblocked, right? And then it's going on and, and continuing. Sometimes, though, this is undesired, right? So you, you might want to really not block the code, but I want to give the impression that my code is synchronous, but in the back end, it's actually asynchronous. How do you do that? Answer is very simple. Async await. Async await. Async await. So test promise, let's, let's look at our, our, our test promise function. Where is it? Test promise, this is our test promise, right? Function. I'm gonna write a new function that kind of resembles this function, but I'm gonna write it calling the promised function, but in an async await manner. And that will give us the ability to, first of all, have a better reading for this code because it's currently it's not readable at all, right? So second of all, it's gonna give you the feeling of async uh, synchronous, right? But at the back end is very performant, right? So let's let's get let's get to that. I am going to uh, call this function test async, and to do that, you have to label your function as async, right? And the moment you do that, you can do this, right? And instead of doing that, you can get the result back, going result one or one, and then you can just literally just do console.log r1. And then do the same thing here. And same thing here. So this is r2, print r2, r3, print r3. And here's the thing. For each one of these functions, if you want to call it, you have to call it with await. And the reason you're doing that is this will be equivalent to as if you called the function then and passed it a function. And you, this is, will be the result of the resolve function, right? So you're going to get back the result and then it's immediately print it. So it is way more readable than the then and catch and all that stuff that we had, guys, right? Way readable. So I pr kind of prefer this better than that. Sometimes I use then and, and catch if it's like a one-liner kind of a thing. But the problem with async await is, yeah, you have to make sure your function is asynchronous, right? Which is not a big deal sometimes. And sometimes you might ask, hey, Hussein, what about the catch? What if, what if I got an error? That's another kind of disadvantage of async. You have to add a try catch. And let's not add a try catch. Let's see if this works first. If I do this and I call it a test async, you can see that it's exactly we're getting the results immediately. Look at that. That's powerful stuff, guys. Look at that. So we got it in a in an almost synchronous way, but it is in the back end, it's asynchronous. So we have async await, we have promises, we have callback. You pick you pick and choose what you want. I'm gonna reference a video that we did detailed the promises versus async await. 
if you want to learn more detail. I know I kind of quickly went through that stuff very quickly. And here is the cool part, guys. Now we get to do stuff that are actually exciting. Fetch API. We made a video about Fetch API. a video about Fetch API. I'm going to reference it here, but the Fetch API is actually a promised base uh, API that allows you to make a request to a function, to a web browser, uh, web surface, and gives back results. And as back of that result, you can do interesting stuff with that result. So let's take a look and uh, pull, use the function fetch. It's, it's available in every browser, available in Node.js and, and also JavaScript. You can use it right now. And uh, uh, my test is always against the GitHub API. So it's called um, API, I think, of github.com, right? And if you do that, this is a REST API. If I do that, you get back a promise. Obviously, you didn't tell it any, you didn't say any then or catch or anything. So you have to specify then the first then that you get back is actually just part of the headers and the headers will be parsed and you can know what's the type of those headers and you can get information about that okay and you can pass a function to do that i know from experience passing calling this api.github.com will give me back a, a, a json object so if i do a dot json calling back the function json then we'll start parsing the results into json and then after we do that we call back again another than and we talked about promises are actually they are chainable so you can do that many times and here is where you get a json object and what we're going to do is just print that object let's just print the j and here's what you get back guys look at that so what we did is we got that Go back results, and then we parsed that result, made it into a JSON, and then we called another that will return another promise that will get chained, and then called that, and then we got back a result. Look at that! This is you can do this right now in your browser and get back these results. Look at that! It's an, a huge object with a lot of stuff. And we talked about REST API. I'm gonna re reference the video there if you're interested. But look at that, guys. You can do, you can get a list of emojis if you want. You can make a list of the emojis, right? Let's do that. Let's make a Fitch API call to the emojis, right? This is the emoji URL. And if you do that, you get an, an object of all the different emojis that GitHub has. And you can play with them. And it's just powerful stuff. So you can you can do things like uh, let's say let's go back to the original one request and then instead print that. You can see that I get back the results. And let's say I want to print what is the code search URL. I want to print that. Okay, or use it maybe to make another request. And you can do that very easily, right? You can do the JSON and then you get back a JSON as well and then you can do this and that will give you the actual URL and you can use that to make another fetch request so let's play with that so what is the what is that emoji list like let's do something issues right let's make a list of all issues let's do something that actually we know like emojis right emojis URL right so if I do emojis URL, I can do that, right? Emojis URL, print that URL, and we have it. How about that? And instead of making a printing that, I want to make another fetch to that thing. Here's what gets really interesting, guys. And that will return a promise, right? Which I can then use normally as if we did that, right? We can do that, JSON, and then we can print the list of emojis. So these are what you see is here is actually emojis with one line of code. <laughs> that is powerful stuff, guys. All right, and you can obviously, if you want to, you can print that. All right, if I, if I if you just visit that page, what happened if I try to render that? Let's try. 
what happened if I try to render this thing? I don't even know. It's not a JSON, so I think it's a blob. So what will happen if I print it? I'm gonna print an image, right? It's like it's actually a blob, right? And if printing a blob is is just it was gonna tell you, hey, by the way, this is an image, right? It's, it's you cannot view the image, I think. Yeah. If I if I interact with a browser, I probably can I can do interesting stuff with this, guys. It's very interesting stuff. Again, guys, I'm gonna reference a video like that. It's, it's actually 100%. <laughs> hey guys, so I'm gonna reference a video for Fitch API. We we dive deep into that. I'm gonna reference the GitHub API that I did. Check out the other contents in this channel, guys. So this was a very brief, <laughs> maybe I would, I would say over two hours worth of recording, uh, just recording the JavaScript essentials, right? And the uh, the powerful thing about this thing guys is uh, is that you can use these tools now to build application and check out the mic other content to learn about building application with javascript right this this video is just purely to kind of give you the tools of javascript hope you enjoyed this video guys i know it was very long right i'm gonna see you in the next one i'm gonna end it right here guys give this video a like share it with your friends if you do like it and i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome what's up y'all this is hussein nasser from igeometry and i believe we are recording all right welcome to the first episode of level one javascript by example, this is JavaScript by example. I'm trying to mimic Audible, but it doesn't work, so sorry. All right, so you've come here, right? You wanna learn JavaScript, or you wanna actually, let's correct that, you wanna build a cool application that will change people's life or that will make your life easier. You wanna build a mobile application, you can do all that with JavaScript, right? What do you need? You don't need anything. You don't need to know any skills. All you need is literally this computer. I have a Mac. If you have Windows, that will work too. If you have a Mac, that will work definitely, right? So all you have to need is just, just a laptop and you can get started. You can build cool applications so in this series in level one we're gonna build uh actually we're gonna build a calculator right this might seem trivial but once you build it you're gonna say that hey i built this right and you can add your own touches to this application right so let's get started how about that let's get actually started just go ahead and start it before you jump into code and all this before we jump into coding and writing uh, different codes let's just get uh to what do you need to get started right so you just need a computer that's where you established that right you get that so you need a certain things of applications that you need to download to get started to run that code that you're gonna author and uh, by the by the end of this series you will be able to author application you author your calculator and even run it on your own machine and you can consume that application from your mobile phone and that will be a really cool things to show after after a few episodes but what do you need to get started what do you actually need first of all you need a computer check the second thing is you need to download uh, a text editor that is where we're gonna write code and I recommend sublime text sub sublime text really simple free tool go ahead and download it 
is just a text editor. If you prefer, if you have your own text editor, go ahead and use it. It just it works. Anything really literally works, right? Any text editor where you can type anything in, right? We need something to type things in. The second thing we need to do, which is a more important thing, is actually a web server. Things that your code will execute on, all right? So you need to host a web application. Uh, you need to host a web server for your application to a, to be executed on top of that. So how do how do you get that? It's very simple. I'm gonna link a video that I did earlier in preparation for this video to prepare for the for this series, right? And once you set this up, you'll be good to go, right? So. I have on this machine, so you can, can go ahead and pause this video and go to the second video where you set up your web server. Once you come back, you'll be exactly where I am. And that's exactly what you need to do, right? All good, that's the two things we need. Let's get started. Let's, first of all, let us fire off our web server, right? To fire our web server here, so, Maybe some of you is not familiar with this application called terminal. So you can just type here literally terminal and Then this will pop up, right? And then once you install your web application or the web server You will go to the directory of the installation in, in, in this case in my case I actually installed it here, right? node modules uh, HTTP server and then Ben and that is my web server. And that's how, by, by the way, how the, that's how you navigate directly. CD is change directory. So once you are here, right, you have, this is your web server. I am going to execute my web server and run it. So that's how you execute the web server. You type node, that's my node.js web server. By the way, if you have Windows, you can use your IIS web server or any other web server, but you can just stick with this as well, right? So any web server will work. Node, HTTP, server, and then very important is the dot, right? So this will be my directory where I run all my code, right? So it is like literally Hussein, which node, node modules, HTTP server, bin, and that's the folder where everything should be uh, executed from. And that's the hard part. Once you do that, you're done. You have a web server running. Now it's time to start writing some codes, right? So we said in the beginning that we're gonna build a calculator. So this episode is probably just getting started, getting set up, learning, taking it very slow, right? We don't, we are not in a rush here. We're building and learning in the process, right? So we have my web server ready. I have my text editor ready. What can I do now? What should I start with? The simplest thing is we're gonna build a calculator right so that's that's the, our goal here but all our code will be in a single file and that file is nothing but an actual HTML file so you be you might be familiar with this file that when you browse the web and you said for example google.com slash find.html you saw some files ending with HTML so you're gonna author the similar thing here. You're gonna author an HTML file. So don't worry what you're gonna write of it, but let's get started with this now, right? Let's type one thing. Let's just type, I just wrote an HTML file. Simple, right? And then we're gonna have save that. Where are you gonna save it? You're gonna save it in the exact directory where you just run your web server. So in my case, it's here. So I'm gonna call it calc.html, right? Stands for calculator. 
I, I have a lot of files here, but don't pay attention to them. So calc.html, and then you click save. And just like that, we created our first HTML file. So I want to go ahead and go back to my terminal here, where did you notice this? When we executed that Node.js application, the web server, we have we we've given back an address, right? We have two kind of addresses: the one two seven dot zero dot zero one. That's our local machine, and that's the IP address of our machine. Another way to execute any code that is in this directory is to actually use the machine name. If you know your machine name, which is basically this is something really simple to do, is just type host name and you'll know your machine name. That's another way of knowing your machine name and address. So now if I copy this and I went to Chrome, right? And I paste that, right? And I type calc.html at the end. I just executed my, I just fetched that HTML file and executed that and I brought that into my uh, computer, into my screen in general, right? So let's change that for simplicity because it's very hard to remember that. I'm gonna change that to my machine name. My machine name is Hussein Mac and that's the port number, right? Uh, that's the port that this server is running on. It could be any port, it could be just 80, but it happens to be 8080. And that's it. That was the hard part, setting up and getting started. So we just got, I just wrote an HTML file. We have that, we have my, my address, and that will be literally the code that you will be refreshing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Every time you write something here, let's, let's try it actually. Let's write something more, says, yep. And then I'm gonna hold it and save. By the way, you save control S. So you, you'll notice that I do this very quickly, but I saved. Now, next time I refresh, I get the new stuff. Right, it's kind of boring though, right? It's just text, right? So we want to build an actual application. So we have to erase all that code and write an actual HTML code, our first HTML code, right? So just getting started, that's the first episode. How to write HTML code, very simple. So what we want to do here is to build a calculator, right? So slowly we're gonna build out all these elements one by one, but let's build the skeleton. Each HTML application starts with this tag, HTML. You have to have that because you have to tell this file that hey, it starts with HTML. And it also, and it ends with HTML. If you do that, it just, just closes that tag for you. This is called a tag. All right, and then what you're gonna do next is you do a body, and that's where most of the code is authored. Right now, to do this the right way, we're gonna do it here now. It's gonna say, Hello world, I just authored my first HTML page. All right now, when I refresh, if you notice. None of these code will show up. Because none of these will show up. But we know now this is my body. This is the HTML page. And that's that's where you write everything, basically. Everything we're gonna write it here. And slowly we're gonna build out this application. It's gonna be fantastic journey, guys. We're gonna have so much fun. Alright, another thing I wanna discuss here is other kind of tags just for fun to show you that different kind of thing because none of the tags actually did something to my code right so let's do this if you wrapped the hello with this b 
right? And then at the end of that, I closed that tag. That's how you open a tag. That's how you close a tag. It's very simple. That's the beginning of the tag. That's the close of the tag. Beginning, close. So what will happen here is I am telling HTML or the browser in this case to execute while it executes. Hey, by the way, anything between these tags, make it bold, right? Let's try that. If you refresh that, you noticed, I don't know if you noticed actually. Yeah, it is actually bold, right? You notice that? Whoa, whoa what happened? <laughs> Face timing. All right. So another thing we can do is we can use these tags, H1, H2, right? Oh, sorry. Close the H1. So what will happen is H1 is called header one, which is a type of header which makes things really big, right? And that was just basic introduction of HTML tags. And whenever you need, you're gonna ask. Now I I know you have questions. Hey, how do I have? How do I do italic? How do I do color? How do I change my color? How do I do this? And and this is the beginning of a journey of thing. How do you do things? You just get started, and you learn in the process. You have now the canvas, right? You are an artist, and I believe that programming is art. You have the canvas. Go ahead and make art. Go ahead and do whatever you want, right? Build that thing from scratch. Build that thing. All right, guys. Now I'm going to do actually the actual code, right? My calculator. Refresh. So that's just title saying, this is my calculator. Don't you dare touch that calculator. All right. Nice. All right. Let's continue with our... Oh, you know what? Let's stop here. I think that's enough. We're going to continue the next episode for with more HTML and we're going to construct the calculator application. All right. I think this is a logical way to stop and hope you enjoy this episode. Now you got to set up. Take your time to set up your application. Ask me questions in the comment section below and I'm going to see you on the next one. Goodbye. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry, and uh, welcome to the second episode of JavaScript by Example, Level 1. So, in the previous episode, we learned how to build a web server, we set up our Mac, we set up our laptop to host uh, this small application that we're trying to develop here, a calculator and yeah we have everything running we have everything set up we built this simple few lines of code and if you notice that was our output right not very impressive but it's a start so in this episode we will actually continue building the interface so this is literally titled building the user interface of this calculator so you guys uh most of you know how a calculator looks like right so that's that's what we're trying to design here we're trying to mimic this here so we have to build these buttons and these beautiful uh icons here in the HTML page that we are writing. So, uh, in order to do that, we need to have some sort of uh, sketch, right? Sketch as what we are trying to accomplish here. So, we want to build 
something like that so there is a zero here there's a dot I'm gonna do an equal plus negative and all these kind of things right so we'll have uh, to have buttons we have to learn how to create buttons and how to create a text box that's a text and yeah and most importantly we need to learn how to create a table because if you if you think about it, this is just a table and it's like a grid right so we need to learn this in order to build that so do you see what I did there we have a goal and then we learn tools to build that. We didn't we don't learn how to use the tools before we actually build the thing, right? So it's the other way around. As we're trying to learn something, we find the tools that will help us uh, accomplish our goals. All right. It's like in math, most people are confused by math in general, where uh, where they find it really hard to see what okay where can i apply this and uh, when when is uh, when can i apply the integral versus the derivative versus that because in math we are we we grown up uh, learning tools instead of learning the applications does that make sense and that's why it's really hard to apply math because we're okay solve this equation or simplify this equation or simplify or solve for x like, what does that mean right and so we're solving tools right we're, 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 we're learning tools but we don't know where we apply them right that's the same thing in my opinion with programming that's why programming is hard and for a lot of people obviously not not everyone but in general uh, people find it hard to learn program because okay when I when do I learn uh, when can I use the uh, equal equal versus the if statement versus the for loop versus the while loop versus the switch it's the same thing it's our educational system is teaching us the tools first and then it says hey you have all these tools go build something uh, you know it's it's kind of hard to memorize what each tool does versus go try building something and then okay i need to do that all right i need to learn how to do that i need to learn how to build a table so i go and learn how to build a table using the table or the html all right i i promise i'm gonna start now in a second all right all right let's get started so yeah first of all we need to build we learn to build the interface and the interface is nothing but actually pure HTML. So again, it's already no JavaScript in this series, in, the, in this episode, but hopefully very soon we need to learn these basic constructs. So let's build something like that. Yeah, all right. Let's 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 get started. <clears throat> all right. So sweet this is let's forget about that part for a second so this is a table right of uh, say one two three four columns and literally five rows right so in html a table tag is actually called table so that's what we're gonna start with it's a table of four rows and uh, five rows and five columns uh, and four columns sorry so let's build a simple simple table here to start with and see where we can go right all right so we're going to go to our nice application here and you can by the way add as many new lines as you want <laughs> it doesn't really matter all right let's get to work so we're going to build a table and Again, with HTML, if you start a tag, you have to close it. You almost have to close it. Yes, you almost have to close it. All right, you know it's right. HTML, that's the closing tag, opening tag, closing tag, opening tag, it's closing tag. Okay, so inside this table, again, if I now save this and then refresh, 
nothing really happens because I didn't build. I built a table, but there is no rows or no columns in that table. So how can I build columns? So let's start with building. Before you build the columns, uh, the application or the HTML that I was designed is always you have to start with rows. Okay, so you start this way, right? You build one row, second row, third row, and a fourth row and a fifth row, right? So let's build one row with one column. Okay, let's just start with very simple name. What is a row in HTML? It is that tr. And then since we opened a row, we close it. So now we just started a row. That so that is a single row, but we did not specify how many columns is in that row. So what is a column? In HTML, very simple. It's TD. So TR is a row, TD is a column. And then we close the TD. And then just like that, we have one row, and inside that row, there is one single column. And between that, the closing and the opening of that column, I'm going to write something. I'm going to call it column one. And then refresh. All right, so we're seeing something in the screen, but it doesn't look like a table. So that is because in HTML by default, when you draw tables, they don't have any border. So you have to draw your border yourself. So there's something called border, and that border is the thickness of that border. So let's just go ahead and do one for the border, save. By the way, the way I'm saving is Command S. That's why I don't see Neon doing that all the time. So go ahead and refresh, and that's it. That looks like a table, all right? It's a table with one column. So who can tell me how can I add any other column? Very simple. Copy and paste. You're going to grow to love copy and paste, guys. Let's do four columns. The first column, we're gonna column two, the first, the third column, column three, column four. Does that make sense? Does they make sense? Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Very nice, guys. Very nice. Alright. So now we established, you know, we just established that this is a table that has a maximum of four column. And HTML knows that. It knows that you have four columns. That's very important, okay. Obviously, now we will come back and start building this part. We're not worried about this part for now because there's a little bit of trickier part. We're not gonna worry about this part yet, but let's build that, okay. So that is four by four, literally. So let's just do that, okay? So the first column is AC, right? It is plus minus. I don't know how to do that, but yeah. I think we can do that. So that changes the, I think, the sign, all right? And then the third one is a percentage. And the fifth one is, is division. Division. Okay, I don't think I know. <laughs> Where is the division again? There we go. Nope, 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 nope. I can't find that, guys. I don't know where's the division. There's a special math key that I can't find. Anyway, let's just do that. That's division. I know in JavaScript this is division. All right, refresh. Yeah. Looks good, right? Looks good. So we have the first row, 
nice. Uh, some of you will say, eh, it's it's not of a fixed size, if you notice, right? Because the the default is just it's auto it, it's uh, each column is auto sized to the column to the content of that column, right? We're gonna fix that real soon, really easy. But let's take it real slow here. So how do I do another column, another row? We copy the entire row. That's one row, right? With one column, right? Let's go ahead and paste. That's the second row. And then let's change that second row to so seven, eight, nine multiplication. Seven, eight, nine, and multiplication. Then just X. There you go. Looks a little bit awkward, but we're gonna fix that. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna fix everything. And then four, five, six, subtract. Four, five, six, subtract. And then one, two, three plus. One, two, three. Plus, okay, what do we have here, guys? Nice, that's a nice calculator. All right, so let's uh, let's fix these width things, right? So each, we want each button, if you notice here, like each button, even if the content doesn't order fair, like they have an exact size, right? It's almost a perfect square. So how do we do that? It's really quite simple, right? And to do that, right, we're gonna do something called call width, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just do a call width of 50 pixels, right? And just try that, just to make sure that this is actually that size. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken, maybe it's just width. Yep, it's just what, sorry. All right, so you notice like we fixed one of them and the rest of entire column just auto-sized, right, to, to fit the rest of the uh, table. So that's, that's a good thing, all right? So uh, let's make it move 30. Yeah, that sounds good, and then we don't have, we, you can set every single column in your, uh, in your, in your row, basically. So let's do that. Just like that. Look at that. And similarly, let's try setting the height. Nice. You notice that it's getting bigger. It's getting like a perfect square there. That's nice. So guys, if you you will gonna notice that if you start searching on the web, there are literally so many ways that are tens of ways to actually do this task, right? This is one way of doing it. Right? You can use other tools like CSS cascade style sheets that actually simplify that right but again we're making things simple we'll explain things from scratch here so let's let's just do this nice so now we took care of the width but how about the the height does not seem to follow us right we need to take care of the rest of these as well right so Let's copy that and let's just do the height on one of them. So if, if I fixed one of them, the rest of them just uh, comply, if you notice, right? And that's cool. So we can just fix one of each here. And we get ourselves a nice calculator, right? So I don't think we need to set the height on all columns. One is enough, right? 
Yep. Again, with CSS, there's ways that you can type this uh, as a class and just apply it in all that tags. So you don't have to repeat and copy and paste that code all over. All right, sounds good. All right, so we have we have some sort of a calculator going on. Uh, if you notice these numbers now, they are kind of going to the left, right? This is the left. That's your left. I want them in the center, just like that, right? So how do I do that? There is, in each TD, you have to do something called align, right? So you notice, like, a, our code is trying to grow up, to grow as we start building this application. Right, so it's good to learn the basic HTML before learning CSS. We will come to that, but yeah, let's 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 get to to these buttons now. Now, number seven, there's something called align equal center. There are values there you, where you can put different values: center, left, and right. And if you want to learn more. Always, your best source is W3School for any HTML code that you can learn, right? And just like that, it's pushed in the center. How about that? That is cool. That is cool. Nice. We're going to do the same thing with 8. This guy. This guy. Nice. Oh, we forgot the four and the one. Let's do it. Where's the four? Oh, we didn't do that. Where's the one? There you go. And just like that, we have some sort of a decent calculator. <laughs> Obviously, now all of you guys will ask us, hey, I'm going to, I want to click on these and do something. We'll come to that, don't worry. <laughs> Slowly, learn how to build the interface first. All right? It's good to learn how to build these basic blocks yourself because there are tools that actually drag and drop and build HTML. Like, I don't know if there are like new tools, but there used to be something called Dreamweaver back in my days. So, I don't know if this is still alive. So, <laughs> but it's. Uh, I don't like to use, personally, I don't like to use tools that do stuff on my behalf because I need, I'm kind of a guy that I need to know what's going on in my application all the time. I need to know uh, what code is written. I need to understand all these kind of codes, right? So we missed, uh, we missed this guy, we missed that, we missed these. Let's make them in the center as well. And maybe in the next episode we'll learn we'll learn how to do not not that we we have to do some JavaScript first, right? But then we go, come back and clean up this interface and and remove these duplication because you notice, right? I repeated this code a lot, and this is not the best practice by any mean, but we're learning, right? So it's good. You you can't just start throwing things. I don't want to throw things that sounds really difficult for you guys so try to make things as simple as possible i don't know if i'm achieving that goal or not but i hope <laughs> do let me know if you have any questions right but you notice the pattern that i'm trying to achieve here right we built something we find a problem we fix it but we always have a goal. We have a goal to build something. It's, it's always this. And all my videos, I built something. I'm, this is my goal. And I face trouble in the journey. And then I find solutions. Like here, right? For first, oh, the cells are too thin. Okay, I need to learn how to, how to make them bigger, right? And then I learned how to do that. But obviously, I know how to do it because... I have like more than 15 years of work on this field, but 
in 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 your case or any programmer really if you, if you want to learn something you have to face problems and you know where to use it in this case so any application anything that you uh, you'll learn in the future you will face uh, some kind of a challenge and then you'll search how to fix that and you're in case of HTML your most source is actually W3 schools online books just to solve your problem and you get you, you're gonna be good at this because you have a goal you're trying to achieve you're not just following instructions right you have you want to do something now maybe you're seeing something here that I'm uh, I'm not seeing right you want to do something different and now you, you will have this uh, state of mind that tells you okay I need to fix this problem I don't like the I don't like that this is uh, for example like a square I want to make the the AC button the clear button kind of bigger you can do that nothing stopping you from doing that right so you can change in the application but this is obviously simple but in general this is the state of mind that I want you to think in I want you to like you're building something you face a problem you fix it always all right now what is the second problem that we face is right that's the problem we need something there on top but okay so that's also a role but it kind of has one big column that is spanning the entire four columns all right so you know that the word i used span so there is a column span of four right there is one column but it's a spanning four columns let's try that so before this is the first row right this the selected row is this so i want to add a row before that come on man that's one row that's one column and There's one thing we need to know. This column is a special column. It spans four columns. And it has a zero in it. Does it start with a zero? Yes, it starts with a zero. So save and refresh. Look at that. All right, guys. That sounds good, right? But well, there's a little problem. For some reason, this zero is on the right. Uh, 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 someone. Oh, some light bulbs are going there, right? Do I want it in the center? No, sir. I want this on the right. Oh, God. Right. You know, this is a mirror. It's flipping. So. Come on, sir. Oh, this is done. Sweet. All right. Some more challenge. Some more challenge. Here, there is a zero that is. You know what's that zero? There is a zero, there is a dot, and there is an equal. That's the final column. That's a bit, a little bit tricky. So. We have three columns. One of them is spanning two, correct? So how can I do that? We have three columns, right? So that's the last column first before the end of the table. Tr. There is a three column. So one, two, three. It's very important. We have three columns. But one of them, which is the first one, happened to be the first one, is spanning two columns. Look at that. Obviously, don't see anything. So let's type something here. So the number, the number zero is here. 
the second column, what was the second column again? It was a dot. There you go. And the third is nothing but an equal. And obviously we need to center these. We need to center this. How about the zero is actually not centered. It's on the left for some reason. So we're just following the Mac calculator here. You, you don't have to. By all means, guys, this is your application. Build it the way you want. You're just learning. You're just building something. You know, you know how to build it. You know how to use the tools. We're, we're both building a calculator. But you feel free to go wild, all right? You don't have to be exactly like I do it. So this is on the left. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that's not bad. Sounds good. I like my application. I like my calculator. Maybe I'll, I'll make it bigger next time. I don't know. But it says, looks nice. What do you think, guys? I think it's good. I think it's very good. I think it's a logical stop for us to stop here, digest all that. And obviously, guys, I'll tell you that all the code that we authored here, don't don't feel like you have to copy it. I know I type, I type fast, but the code will be available on this GitHub uh, page. And... I'll copy uh, this GitHub page is literally in the description below, right? You just click on that. And then when you go there, you click on Calc, and that's the source code. Obviously, this is the previous episode, but the next episode, you'll find everything is on and under branches. So you click here, and you click that's a branch one, which is episode one. Then you'll see another thing called episode two and episode three. In each episode, we're gonna label it with a branch. So you know uh, which which ep uh, which episode is to pull from, right? All right, guys, let's stop here and continue in the next series, next episode. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Do ask me questions if you have any questions. Just uh, comment below, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Goodbye. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry, and today we we'll continue with our JavaScript by example on level one. Building our calculator. Look what we built on the previous episode. That's what we built. That's a beautiful schematic calculator right there. Nice, right? And that's the source code for it, remember? Built it from scratch. Look at that. So, again, guys, if you have any questions, if you want to look at the source code, it's available on the GitHub page here. So, it's in the description below. You can just click on that along with the rest of all of these series. So, I'm going to bundle it in a playlist where you can access it at your leisure. Okay. So, what are we going to do in this episode, uh, actually, is... Uh, I believe we will start ha adding the first JavaScript code to interact with our work here. So we can just, you know, if I click 9, I expect 9 to be there. If I click 8, I expect nine, 8 to be here. So uh, another kind of uh, note that I want to add. This will, won't be like a conventional calculator that is... Um, like the one you're used to where you click 9 plus 9 plus and it will add the result as you do as, as you continue it will be actually much simpler where we type in the expression where we do 9 multiply by 6 plus and we're gonna add everything there and then when we hit equal we will add the results of that expression does that make sense? So that's the only difference here. So just make things much, much simpler as a level one calculator, you know. If we do it the other way, it will be very messy. So let's just keep it clean, keep it simple, all right? How does that sound? First thing I want to do before we continue, I want to change this symbol from X to the actual multiplication uh, symbol, which is actually a star right 
and I'll, I'll tell you later about this, right? Why I'm doing this, because I'm gonna use this character in, in a special operation. So a star means multiplication in JavaScript, and actually, actually, I would say in almost all programming languages, a star is a multiplication. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's that's true. But yeah, yeah. So what we're gonna do here is when I click on these pappies, any of them, except those, I will add that button or that key or that digit to the result here. Except this, because AC is basically means clear everything, right? So when you click on this, this will reset to zero. How does that sound? Does that sound coolish to you guys? Let's get started. That's good. Let's build something. All right. We need to identify something here first, right? These cells, right? Each cell, like cell number three, that holds digit number three, is actually nothing but this, right? Which is kind of this element. This element. And be careful here, I said element. That whole object, that whole element, that whole tag is one entity. And I want to somehow identify that entity, identify that object, and grab that value and do something with it. Today, I cannot. And the reason is, it does not have an identity. It does not have an identifier. It does not have a unique name that identify these objects. So that is what's missing in our code here today. So that's what we want to learn today. We want, we want to learn how to clearly identify these objects so we can write JavaScript code that can hook into these object and pull values and create events. That's a new word now. Events. Create events that can trigger uh, an action. An example of an event is, guess what? That's an event. That's an event. That's another event. A click is an event. A double click is an event. A move is an event. All these are actually events. This is an event. An event is uh, is something that happens and triggers uh, a piece of code that can be executed. So these once we identify these objects, we can assign events to these objects, which can which can uh, which can allow us to uh, hook into these events and do cool stuff. Like when I click, remember when I said when I click, that's an event. When I click. So that object will be listening to this click event, but we have to do all that work. Now it's just dumb. It doesn't know anything. We have to teach it everything, right? All right, guys. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. All right. Let's first identify these puppies. Okay. You know this. What is this? Hmm? This is another way, by the way, to look in the in these. Let's see if we can do this. If you right click in Chrome, if you're using Chrome, uh, if you're using Chrome and you do right click and you do inspect. Remember, that's just like our code, right? But the beauty of this is that actually when you click, 
Remember when I told you that this is the row, that the entire thing is the row, that is a cell, that is a cell. So that is actually that one, right? That's zero. And then here, and then you click here. It's just beautiful, guys. Look at this. Chrome is really cool. It can tell you which cell exactly, right? So we want a way to identify these puppies. How can we do that? How can we do that, sir? It is by using a new attribute. By the way, guys, I didn't tell you that these are called attributes. Probably you should know by now. Right? We are assigning attribute. This is a third attribute, the second attribute. A third attribute is called an ID. It doesn't have to be in sequence, obviously. And I'm going to call this ID result because guess what? That's our result, right? That's the beauty of the first one. All right. And let's go ahead and identify the rest of all these. Uh, let's call this clear. ID clear. And then ID is equal sign. Sign. ID equal percentage, ID equal div, division, ID equal number seven, ID equal number eight, ID equal number nine, ID is equal number ten. Nope, that's not number ten. <laughs> Malt. ID equal multiplication and ID is equal number four and ID is equal number five that is obviously six sub ID is equal number one number two Number three, ID is equal plus, ID is equal, oh, well, guess what, this is number zero, ID is equal decimal, decimal, <laughs> that's embarrassing, I don't know how to spell this decimal, so, that is really embarrassing. <laughs> my excuse it's not my first language english is not my first language that's my cute <laughs> okay guys don't make fun of me equal all right sorry about that all right equal all right so i think we identified all of these puppies now so if we refresh, obviously nothing will happen. I'm not expecting anything to happen here. It's just we have a better way of identifying my objects now. Now that we did that, we are ready to write some JavaScript code, guys. How about that? Let's get started. Okay, I want you to go at the bottom of your application, right before your body, right, right before your body ends. And we're going to insert a new tag where we're going to write a script tag. That's right. You're going to write your first script. That's what we're going to write JavaScript. In, in the old days, we used to say like type equal JavaScript, but it's known. It's, now it's known. Script is always JavaScript. There was there are two options now. You, you were say you, you, we used to do like script equal VB script or equal equal JavaScript, but yeah. So now it's only JavaScript. But yeah, JavaScript. What should I do? What should I do now? We will learn how to identify not identify how to how to retrieve an object 
and when I say an object, this is an object, this is an object, this is an object, all of these are object, right? All of these are object. This is an object. This is a cell. A cell is just another object. So let's just do that, right? I'm going to pull the value of cell number three, right? So how can I do that? We're going to do this. Document. Document. That's the first object that you need to learn. Document is the whole big object that contains our entire stuff here right and remember we identified all of these as elements before right so guess what to get an element or to get an object all we have to do is actually call a function called get element by id so you notice that my special sublime text here actually autocomplete this right so you can you, you you can install a plugin that actually help you do that you don't have to though right any text editor if you know it to spell that you have to spell it correctly though right get capital E element capital B ID right so this really helps if you if you have this if you have this uh, uh, IntelliSense uh, that actually could continue this code for you helps a lot so get element by ID and then what's the name of the element I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull number three that's the element all right so it's always like like math having just an expression like that floating in the air doesn't make sense you have to assign it to something so assigning uh, an object or a variable or an element is done by doing this in JavaScript you do let and then you declare a variable name and then you say equal that means hey go find me that object and put it in that variable how about that right and just like that we got that object so but what can we do with that lots of stuff remember number three is this right so now i can access this attribute i can access this attribute i can access so many other attributes i can access this attribute guess or not this this actually another attribute this is actually the value the text content of that object so how do i do that so let's do that for simplicity we're going to learn another command here that does a, a message it's very useful it's called alert alert is nothing but a browser uh pop-up box that basically shows a value very useful right also annoying so let's just do that alert num3 so that won't make much sense now but let's do that when I refresh now this code will always execute because it's just in the root of the script there is nothing stopping it from getting executed so it will get executed the moment I refresh my page it will find that number three it will put in that value and then it will call the browser alert and then we will put a message there and there will be something in it and we have no idea what's in there let's find out look at that digest that wall of drink some more it says I retrieved an object called HTML table cell element right and that's right that's that whole number three is actually an object it's called HTML table cell element but that is 
weird because uh, it has number three in it. I was expecting to see three there, right? I was expecting to see that, the number three. Well, you can actually show that number three, and it's very simple. You add that dot. Remember, document is an object, and this is a function that belongs to this object. Number three is an object. And to access the properties of that, we can, we can do, we can access the properties. And one of the important properties is called text content with a capital C. And now if I refresh, I actually got the value inside that puppy. Very, very, very important. Okay, guys, let's remove that alert. What happened? Who can tell me what happened if I do this? Sup is a string a value. Now, think of this as a value, as a as, uh, as a text and I'm gonna put this text in the text content of number three object let's see what will happen Ooh, look at that we changed the value of the object that is actually interesting because we were gonna do something similar when I click on these buttons I want to change this I'm not gonna change this this doesn't change right Right, so we're not gonna do that, but you're getting the idea, right? So, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna declare all these variables document.get element by ID result, and then result.text content is equal to new result, all right? And that will execute on page load look at that doesn't make any sense now but we have the building blocks we know what we're gonna do now let's do that we have this we have this piece I know how to change that that is cool let's actually write the first event Number three, let's stick with number three and let's stick with just the result for now. Okay, number three, I want to do something with number three object. I want to add an event on number three. And that's called add event listener. Remember we said listening to an event? And to listen to an event, you have to specify two things what event are you listening on and what are you gonna do when you listen when that event get executed so the first thing is that's my event that's simple the second thing is a tricky part when I click on number three I want to call a function I want to call a function. I want to call a piece of code that will put the number three in the value of the result. We know how to put the value in the result. We just learned that. But how do I do it on a function? Well, that's a good question. That's how you write a function. Function type no what do we call this function we're gonna call this function print just print print is good I'm not sure if it's reserved or not but yeah yeah uh, just just in case it's resolved I'm gonna call it print symbol assuming this or these are symbols right print symbol and then I'll just call it print number three, right? That's the function. 
Yeah, let me make it simpler. What we're going to do here is, this is, again, this is just, it has its own body. So what we're going to do is we copy that code. Same thing, right? Let result is equal that, and then result dot text content is equal the number three. We have to do it this way. We have to put the quotation between them. And refresh. Will that work? We didn't, we, we missed something here, guys. So number three dot add event listener, we said I'm gonna click, right? On click, I want you to call the function number three. Print number three. Let's do that. When I click on number three now, what? Look at that. Who can guess how can I do the number two? We're going to do this, right? Copy that. Two. Two. Then we're going to copy the whole thing. We're going to make this two. So we need another function called print number two. And then we're going to put number two in it. All right. As you can see, it's getting uglier. It's getting longer. The code is getting longer, but it's doing its job. Let's see. We're going to fix that in a minute. Refresh. When I click three, shows three. When I click two, shows two. That is cool, but I want to fix that. I want to make this a one function. But how do I do that? Hmm. I don't want to just say print number three or print number two and print. I know I'm going to do it like I'm going to write 70 function by, <laughs> by the end of that. I don't want to do that. I want to, to do it in a smart way. Right. So let's just back up here. Let's call this function print symbol. Just print any symbol, right? But that function actually takes a parameter. And that's a cool thing here. A parameter is nothing but the object. It has it has a lot of things plus the object that was uh that was that that the event executed on it has the, it has the target object that the event executed on and that's very important so let's get let's just uh, let's do that right when i click on number 3 i'm going to call print symbol when i click on number 2 i'm going to call print symbol same thing but I'm not going to put a hard-coded value here. I'm going to put a value. And guess what is the value? We need to know what is that E represents. And the beauty of this, like all of these, both of them will call the same function, but they will give different E, different variable, different... Uh, event target right so we're gonna find out soon enough here let's use our alert here to say e dot target dot id and let's see what happens here so when i click let's go through the code when i click on number three this function will get executed so the cursor will go here and we will pass something, we don't know what's that, and then we will get that value, and then we will print a value, it will display an alert, with e.target.id. What is that ID? I have no idea, we're gonna find out soon enough. Refresh, click on three, hmm, number three, isn't that our object? 
that is beautiful. If I click into, wow, look at that. We got that object back. And guess what? If we got that object back, that means I can access its text content, right? Let's uh, declare a variable called object equal e dot target, and then see I I saved that object into uh, into the, the target into the object, and then from the object, what are we gonna do here? Is you guessed it, guys. You guessed it. I'm gonna take that content of that object that I clicked on. And I'm gonna put it in the result. Sweet or not? It is a sweet. Three, three, two, two. Beautiful. Can I scale that code now? Can I do let num1 is equal to num1? And then I just do a num1 dot add event listener click print some same exact same exact code same exact code that's the beauty of that and then we refresh and then we do two three one look at that yeah Flipped though, why is it like that? You'd think it's two, one, two, three, right? Not three, two, one. All right. Slowly we're gonna clean up code, guys. Slowly we're gonna learn stuff. For, by, for now, we're gonna do it this way. For da, 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 paste. So that's number three, number four. Oops, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at all this code, guys. You wrote all this code. That's cool. Nine. And then nine. Isn't that cool? Again, guys, there is a always a better way of doing things. But we're going to slowly learn. And there is always a reason I do this this way. Because we're going to use something else to simplify this code. Literally replace all this code with two or three lines. But what they call this, this proverb where a journey of the thousand mile begins with a step. Is that right? Yes, I think it's right. That's how you say it. So always do something. Always make a step at night. In all seriousness, if you love to do something, don't say that, hey, someone have done it before. You think there are no JavaScript uh, exercises out there on YouTube? There are thousands, but I don't care. I want to do this. I like teaching. I like... This is my unique style of teaching, and I like to do it, right? So, nothing stopping me from doing it. And the same thing with you. If you love to do something, just go and do it. Do the work. Show your work. You're, lear you're here because you want to learn programming. And to learn programming is to start building your own application that will uh, reach other people and changes their life and simplify other tasks and that is the purpose purpose of all what we're doing here right okay guys back to real life <laughs> back to our application all right let's do that one two three four five six seven eight nine Look at that, that is cool. But there's like a little problem here. <laughs> if I click one and then I click two, and then I click three, you notice that it's actually adding, right? It's not overriding that value. So 
So let's fix that little problem. And then we're going to see you on the next one. So let's, let's fix this. So you guys just encountered your first bug. This is what we call a bug. This is an undesired, undesired uh, functionality right because this is not what we want and the application is not doing what we want so let's get to do it let's make it do what we want when i print the symbol i get the result object that's the first line that gives me this object and then i get the target that's whatever i clicked on and then after I do that, I take the text content of that target and then put it in the result of my object function. So how do I do that? We're going to do that, right? See, I'm taking the object and I am slamming it into that text content. So that is effectively overriding whatever the old value was so how can i preserve that value and then add the new content it's very simple you copy that puppy the new result text content equal to the old result text content plus whoa 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 all right okay okay all right to be this way equal the old plus the new and then you concatenate these two guys so if uh let's 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 walk through this refresh three two Oh, look at that. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Good work, guys. Good work. That's beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So now we have our application doing what we want. Not quite, but slowly. We're going to do it slowly. So I think this is a logical point to stop here but let, let's just explain one more thing before we end this series this episode so let's take the result take the result object refresh put one here zero okay what happened here is take the result object i have the result object and it has a text content of zero okay always when you execute go from right to left Take the uh, target. I'm going to click on three. I'm, I didn't click yet, but I'm going to click on three. And so three. And then now take the result again from the right. Take the result text content. What is the current result content? It's zero. Okay, take a zero. Yeah, take a zero. And then add the object, which is the target. Damn it. Three. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Add a three next to it. Bleh. That will concatenate. That will, the result will be zero, three. Oh, man. That's awful. All right. So if I click three, zero, three. Again, this is not what we want. And then if you click at three again, take the new result, which is zero, three, and add a three to it. So that's a three three and then add a two and then one and then dun, dun, dun. yeah oh yeah there you go all right guys let's stop here it's a logical point i think and next episode and the next episode we're gonna do these puppies and then we do yeah the operations which is like literally the same code really we're gonna do the clear and Hopefully we're going to do the equivalent, equal, equality of the evaluate. All right, guys, long episode this time. Uh, 
I'm going to see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and to check out the rest of the content in this channel. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye. What's up, y'all? How are you doing today? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry. Continue. Let us continue with our beautiful calculator. This is the JavaScript by example series where we build stuff using the tools of JavaScript, right? It's always put your mind to it. You're building an app. You're building something. And programming tools are just that is it's just tools and you're using them and what we have been doing so far man we have been we did that right we built the UI we have almost a complete user interface we added events oh look at that when we click on certain buttons we now add those to this sticks that is cool what we did not do which we will do in this episode is actually add code to clear and add these operations and hopefully we can also cal uh, equivalent the results as well so yeah let's get this even zero the zero we didn't add that so that will be tricky all right, so there is a lot of, uh, we'll find a lot of bugs in the process, but we're going to fix them slowly. All right, let's get to work. Okay, open your calc.html. Obviously, guys, you'll find the code from the, this will be in this description. You will see the latest code at the end of this episode. So go back to the previous episode, grab the code from the previous episode and then continue on right so that will be episode three this is episode four all right what do we do man look at all this code man when we learn about loops we will shrink this code right we will uh, we'll make it more compact make it more neat all right so what are we missing man we're missing adding these puppies right if we click on these nothing happens that's because we did not listen on those events. Let's go ahead and create subtraction document to get element by ID. What did we call this sub? All right, we called it sub. By the way, there is another way to know if you right click on this and you do inspect any web page, really, you can find the ID really easily. So it's sub. And then on sub dot add event listener right print symbol and yeah let's just do that and then we're gonna add the rest so nine minus nice nine look at that sweet all right let's add the plus Get element by ID plus and then plus dot add event listener click print symbol yeah don't accidentally add those huh guys so maybe I'll, I'll hide my picture here but yeah don't accidentally add those that will become problematic for you I think there is malt let malt Equal document dot get element by ID mult and then I believe it's called dev. What is that? Is it called mult? And then dev. It's really called dev. Mult dot add event listener on click. Just print the same symbol. So as you were calling the same function and it's doing great for us, but certain function will need to do different. Last one, dev is equal document. Division. And on the division, click print symbol. Save. 
refresh. What do we have, man? 9 multiplied by 9 minus 6 plus 3 divided by 2. Oh, nice, look at that. That is so cool. And then we'll we'll need an equal. That will be in, uh, we'll see. We'll need to do the dot. It's very important. And we'll need to do the zero. We didn't do those two. So what is the dot? What is the ID of that puppy? It's called decimal. Decimal it is. Let decimal equal document dot get element decimal. And then decimal. Click. We're just printing, nothing special. Just print those symbols. And zero. What do we call you, zero? Zero is num zero. Hmm. Num zero equal document or get element by ID num zero. And then after we get the num zero, num zero i only added it at the beginning because it doesn't i just wanted to organize it because you, obviously you can add it then doesn't matter but it's just for having the app have a neat look all right so why is this yeah that's because only three characters yeah, okay all right looks good refresh 9 multiplied by 6 minus 3 plus 2 minus 1. Uh, touch. Look at that. Minus 6.3 plus 6. Nice. Look at that. All right. We're going to show you a list of bugs that we will fix. This is the first bug. Zero, if you add zero to a zero, it's just zero, right? You can't, we should not keep adding zeros, right? So we will solve this with something called conditions or if statements, right? If there is a zero, don't add another zero to it because it doesn't make any sense. So multiplication, that's okay. But another problem is that this is not an operation, right? This is, doesn't make any, any sense, but yeah, we're allowing that. And the another thing is this. <laughs> That's because we don't have a fixed size, we have an auto size. And as we add, our calculator gets fatter and fatter. Look at that, full bodied. It's a full body, it's not that. Yeah, look at that. All right, so. Last thing we want to do in this episode before we end it and for the next episode we're going to do the equivalent is actually clear. All right, that's so all that will require different function to do that. So let's go ahead and add a clear. What do we call it clear? Did we call it what did we call that function? Man, we called it clear. How about that? It's called clear. So let's go ahead and pull that. So that all those point to the same function. They execute the same code. It's always take me, the one I clicked on, which is E, whatever I have as a content, just display it. So it's simple. But now when I click on AC or clear, I want to do something different. So let's do this. Clear is equal document dot get element by ID. Nope, 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 by ID clear and then we'll do that clear dot add event listener click now we can do two things here we can create another function called clear or we can actually introduce uh, a new inline function or we call the expression here so let's just introduce that as the title of this series so like we're gonna call this arrow functions yeah why not 
let's introduce this another type of functions called arrow functions an arrow function are appropriate if you have one single line of code like in our case where when we when we want to clear this text it's literally take the result right which is this and set it to zero so it's, it's actually one line of code so we will have to have that line of code executed in this statement so to do that is you basically provide the parameter which is this e and then you will add an arrow and then what you will do is basically execute the, the that command which is document to get the limit by id results dot text content is equal to zero and that's like that we're done do you see that guys you can by the way add another line here it doesn't really matter JavaScript so take some time ask questions if you want to know more about this this is this is another function type so this is this is one way to do it right so e is equal document or I just added this parameter we don't really use it here but uh, well I'll tell you in a second now Let's see if that actually did the trick. So nine 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 AC. Woo! Look at that. It actually worked. How about that? So that's how actually we do this. Another way, remember? So again, you can do whatever you want. So there is another function called clear. You can go do it this way, and then you can do the exact same thing that we did here. Text content is equal zero and just like that we can let's comment out this line so we can show you that there are multiple ways of doing things in programming so we can do that and just literally call clear so you have you can write that function up and call it from here or you can use it in line so let's see if that works Looks like we broke things, guys, here. What did we break? Yeah, we definitely break something. We definitely broke something, guys. We broke something. Oops, nothing's working. Okay, so that's time for debugging. What happened here? Clear has already been declared. Ah, that is right, because we call this function. So what we, what we saw here is actually good. So we use the clear as a function name, and we also use it as a variable name. And does the app got confused? So we 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 called it clear screen again so let's just do that now nine and nine things are working again that's good and then we click this and that works again so you have this option or you can do it the arrow way function the arrow the arrow function I was about to say arrowhead the water <laughs> but yeah that's why we do it e is really optional here because you we didn't really use it uh, I don't really care about that object AC so I, that's one way to do it another one way to do it was uh, as we just did here which is that and I'd like to start using this right e again we didn't use that so if you didn't use any any variable you can just replace it with an empty string so that's another way of writing an arrow function Another way of writing an arrow function, you can write an arrow function here, assign it to a variable, but let's take it slow here. So now we just introduced another function. Optionally, you can use it if you want. It's just, just reading that line, you can see what the function does. And instead of, oh, print symbol, oh, I have to go, what does print symbol do, you know? So that's just two ways of doing things if you really prefer it. 
So I'm going to comment out this code. I don't believe I explained what comment does. Commenting is, is, is a way of explaining the code by saying and free form text like oh this prints out symbol on the calculator calculator screen right so you can type whatever you want and the code will be ignored this will never be executed so and you can comment out a bulk of code that you don't want the code to be executed it's just take it out all right so yeah so what do we I think we will stop here so we have our nice functions here we have a lot of bugs but we'll fix them and we have decimals we have we don't have equal yet we're gonna do that in the next episode but we did a clear that's cool and yeah there's another bug here where if you hit nine or six and there is a zero it will always add the zero which is really doesn't make sense right I think we talked about this like if you click here and you add nine it doesn't add a zero so we need to fix that we need to remove that really we we're not gonna use a negative or positive here really because we can just use these as an expression so and you're gonna replace them with parentheses a very important functionality okay next episode evaluating that actual equation that we can write and displaying the results stay tuned subscribe to so you don't you guys don't miss anything and i'm gonna see you in the next one goodbye what's up y'all this is hussein nasser from my geometry and let us continue with our beautiful calculator here all right what we're building today what did we do last time we did most of these buttons now we can write in full equation right we can do coolish stuff we can clear we can do a division but we can do oh we can even do decimal Ooh, zeros all right so we can do all that stuff what we're we missing we're missing the evaluation it's really really simple to evaluate that puppy so let's go ahead and open our calculator that is our calculator right there guys all right look at all that look at all this code guys Ooh. all right what are we going to do now so we want when we click on that evaluation or equal, equal uh, the equal button right we want to evaluate whatever expression is there on the result is that what it's called it's called result okay the good thing is that we already fetched that we fetch the result object so we have that object okay so what we're gonna do here is actually it's try to evaluate that let's let's just do that for a second here we have a lot of code here see that's the last code we introduced another type of function last time try to be fancy that's the called the arrow functions where we actually reset we we click like someone click clear we reset all the values or zeros on that so we're gonna do something similar actually today here as uh, do we have a button in the equal did we give it a name did we give it a name sir let me hide myself here so so you can actually see the code all right what did we call that again we called it equal and guess what we actually did not pull that icon so let's just go ahead and equal equal document or get element by id and it's called equal so let's just call it that very simple very basic all right so now 
if someone clicks on equal, we want to do something fancy here. What are we going to do, man? So let's just use our functions again. I'm really, really, I like those. Just one line that does everything. And by the way, in JavaScript, you can just, by the way, break things into multiple lines. It doesn't have to be like this one single line, right? Okay, what do we want to do here? It's really simple, really simple. So the good thing is I already have that object, the result, right? And what I want to do is actually evaluate that result. So literally say result dot text content is equal to result dot all right, bye. Dot text content, but we'll introduce a new function called eval, which is literally a built-in function. Evaluate the supplied string as a JavaScript code. Can you can you imagine how cool this is, right? So you give it a string and what it does is actually evaluate that string as if it was a code, basically like one plus one minus three, and then it will actually evaluate that and then compute the result. What are we gonna do after the computing the result of that highlighted portion is put that value in this. And you can just ignore the E. I just added that. Uh, so we avoid the parentheses. I'm back. All right. How about that? Let's just save and try that. I think you can do that too. Yeah, you can do anything. You want. Whatever is more readable for you guys, just feel free and do it. Just, you can write the code like that. You can write it in one line. You can write it, break it in multiple lines. It's all good. So let's do nine plus nine. And they say eval. Oh, that's a revelation right there, guys. Oh man, six plus three. Nine. Is it nine? Yes. <laughs> okay, nine times 99 times nine. Yeah, why not? Sweet, sweet, three plus three plus one, seven, holy mama, look at that, plus, uh oh, that's wrong, uh oh, uh oh, so, if you did something wrong, and if you equal, it's actually, it will try to evaluate it, sometimes it will fail, like in this case. It will just do nothing and we will we'll handle that in other cases but like if you get six plus minus six what does that mean it's actually zero six plus minus six think as if there is a there are parentheses on this right so we'll do the parentheses in the next episode i think and, and then we're going to make this much much clearer all right, so let's just, just do more co cool stuff. Nine over three. So as you start doing multiple things, it will not become as clear as, you know, the result of, there's always like a multiplication and division in math, you know, there's always a function that is preferred over the other, like right? certain operators are preferred, like a multiplication is preferred over the, uh, operands such as the addition and the sub right so uh, yeah look at that nine minus six plus I'm, I'm having so much fun can we do some more can we do a decimal 3.3 plus 3.3 uh oh uh oh it does not like that <laughs> we'll, we'll need to find out why it didn't fail so six plus 1.1 huh, it actually worked okay so we need to fix that extra zero which is useless 
right? So we'll fix that and maybe in the next episode, right? So, uh, yeah, so I think like 18 plus 3.1, it's 21.1. So 3.3 plus 3.3, it did not like that one. And I think that's because of the extra zero that we're gonna fix as well. So yeah, let's just take it light today, guys, and, and stick with that as the result. So we have, I think we have a functional, a functioning calculator. Obviously, there are a lot of things like divide division by zero, you know, infinity, right? <laughs> well, there's a debate whether it's infinity or not. But yeah. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to see you in the next one. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. So some of you suggested that I end each of these episodes with a quiz or kind of a question. So you guys can take the time and try exercise it for yourself, and and it will be. I think I think it's a great idea. So I I'll start to do that starting this episode. So sorry I didn't catch that suggestion later, but yeah. So uh, try this, guys. Okay. So try solving this problem with with the tools that we learned so far. Right. You can search the net for other tools, but. Just in general, this is the problem that we have. If I click on, sorry, over, if I click on any digit, I'm starting to add, you, you will notice that the zero is, is getting appended to, right? So regardless, whatever we add, we always add the zero. So the zero sometimes makes sense to add, sometimes it doesn't, right? So like, if if it's an operator like like plus yeah it's okay right zero plus six but it doesn't make sense to add a zero nine or zero eight or right so this is the fix if i clicked on a digit do not append right if if the current uh, if i click on a digit do not append that zero try to not append that zero if i click on anything else it will be okay right so zero one two three through nine just to replace the zero with the number instead right so so it's just it will be something like that like like that right? so if it's zero click eight but if it's zero I play plus it actually takes the plus into consideration right dot works too right you can append it so work on that guys and i'm gonna see you in the next episode and we're gonna fix that problem in the next episode stay tuned what's up y'all this is hussein nasser from igm3 bringing you software engineering by example and today's example is actually building a calculator today's topic is javascript so javascript by example all right, guys. So yeah, so actually, I, I had to record this episode again. Uh, my mic was off, and I went like through full through twelve minute, <laughs> and then I discovered, oh, there's no audio. Hmm. Uh, so wasn't really useful. You see, just someone just took. Yeah, just like that. So yeah. All right. So in this video, we're gonna solve. Uh, one of the problems that we have, one of the bugs that we have in the, uh, in the software. And in order to solve this, we can introduce a new tool, right? Okay, so to fix this problem is, uh, look at that. First, the problem is when I click a digit and the current value is zero, we're actually appending that. And we don't want it. We don't want to do that. We only want if if uh, if we only want if it's a digit that I'm pressing and the value is zero, I want to override that. But if it's an operation, it's cool to do that. Like keep the zero and then plus six and then minus three, and then plus zero. Right? Uh, you can do that. That's cool. But if the current value is zero and you're pressing a digit, one of these puppies. 
we always want to override that okay otherwise we want to append so how can we fix this problem right how can we fix this let's go to our function here called print symbol if you have the code guys by the way this code is always in the description below i always put the latest code so you can access that you can follow the github repo uh, to actually uh, see all the episodes and source code for every episode there is all right so what we want to do here is ask ourselves a question if the current value that we are pressing is a digit all right and the value is zero the current value is zero overwrite otherwise append right again let's repeat that so see we just we just introduced a new concept here we're teaching our code something it doesn't know how to do before we're teaching it conditions right if i'm clicking on a digit which is a nine or a six or a three or a two or a one right then overwrite don't append don't append the current zero to that just override it so how can i do that so we ask ourselves a question here so how do i check if it's a zero what is the zero here that's the value right the actual result if this is equal as zero so what did we write here so this is the conditional statement so if this is a keyword you add parentheses that's the condition right and the result the text content is this if that value happens to be zero so now you notice that there is a double equal here instead of the regular equal the regular equal means uh, an action hey go and assign the right hand side to the left hand side this is actually a question is this equal to this it's an actual binary result does this equal to this so it either returns one or zero otherwise this is actually overriding the value whatever on the right hand side put in the left hand side so if it is zero what do we want to do if it's a digit we'll worry about that if whether it's a digit or not later but i want if this is true if this is a result zero then go ahead and just override the object the text content which is what object i clicked on here override it regardless else do this so this means either these one of these will get executed not both right and this is very critical in programming you have to i, I want to execute one path but not the other can we save and test our stuff if it's zero override if it's not zero then append we'll check out nine that's cool it actually wrote the nine overriding the zero six it actually appended now that is coolish coolish nine how about zero plus oh we don't want that we want actually if it's a z plus and minus and multiplication and division we want to append so how can we fix this there are like literally tens of ways to fix this problem you can add more if statements now that you know how to do if statement you can actually what do you what do you want to what you can do is write another function called print this is print symbol right and this works only i want this logic to be executed only when i click digits so one two three four blah, 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 two nine and a zero obviously all right but i do not want this logic to execute on the rest of the stuff so how about we call this function we copy this function and we call this print digit and this is print simple so we have two functions now print digit if let's add some comments if the clicked 
object is a digit like one two three four zero we have this special logic where if it's a zero then override otherwise do that but print symbol guess what i always want to override a symbol if it's anything else hmm interesting okay that sounds good if it's a symbol like these append regardless so that's our original code if you remember otherwise do this little trick so let's go our to our events here remember these guys remember go back to the third episode you're gonna watch these so number zero that's a digit so I don't want to call print symbol for it I want to call print digit and number one dash right dash right dash right dash right dash right dash right yep so these now go through a different path my friend right that's fine try that three oh mamacita look at that oh nice look this is what I want we want to append nice this is cool guys this is coolish so nine multiply by nine plus three minus 2.1 this is amazing this is amazing amazing stuff all right guys we're gonna stop here so we did we introduced the calculator conditional statements right i'm gonna push this uh code to to github right right in a second now here but but yeah so what do we want for the quiz for the next episode right okay all right so this is something that you guys you can do it yourself but i'm not i think I, i'm not, i think i'm not gonna do it now that you know conditional statements how about you do this fix this bug <laughs> see this is not a this this is not a mathematical equation that doesn't make any sense right so try this is i think this is a bit difficult but try give it a shot so if you just clicked on a multiplication or a or or a division or an operator you can only click on one operator at a time this is kind of validation that we can introduce but try to fix that it's a bit a little bit challenging but give it a shot right so what we what we don't want is if someone attempt to uh, like click plus and then he tried to add another operator so another symbol so he tried to f add two symbols consecutively we want to block that right that's your quiz for the next episode in the next episode we're gonna do something different right if you ask me to do that we're gonna do it obviously but but let's see right take yourself into this challenge you know variables i think we introduced variables so we're gonna use variables to do that if i click on a plus users can't click on two operators consecutively right we need to break that so that's one way to fix it. So try to fix it. Try to fix this bug. We will introduce a fix for this instead tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Whatever we're going <laughs> to fix this fat calculator. Full-bodied calculator. Look at that. Look at that. We're going to fix that. All right, guys. All right. Have a great evening, morning, afternoon, guys. Subscribe. Like the video. All right. And... Keep watching, keep subbing, keep liking. See you in the next one. Goodbye. What's up, y'all? This is Jose Nasser from iGeometry, bringing you software engineering by example. So welcome to the seventh episode. Yes, seventh episode of JavaScript by example or level one. And I think I will make this the final episode. Unless you guys 
want to continue this, but we need to start level two very soon. Coolish stuff are coming. Very coolish stuff are coming, right? We want to build a game on level two. So that's why I want to end that. And you're going to have, you can feel free to go nuts on the comment section, ask me a question. If you want to resume, this is not the end of the world. We can always resume and make this app much, much more cool. But yeah, I'm going to try to add as much. So this is going to be a long episode. I'm going to add as much as stuff as I want in this and kind of just move on to do the next thing. How about that? All right. So what do we want to do? I'm going to convert this into an actual text box where we actually can type stuff there. That would be cool. Very cool. Right. And once we type, we can actually uh, make really cool stuff once we can type. Right. I'll remove that. I'll remove that. Right. Percentage. It's not really useful for us. Because, uh, yeah, we, we can't keep it. I don't know. Okay, but I'll replace those with parentheses and I'll make this into a tick box. Let's get started. So, our puppy here, where is it? We're building this, right? We've been building that. Where is the result? The first line is actually the result and it's, it's just... It's just what it is, right? It's just we're using the column itself. But we want to introduce uh, we want to introduce a new element in this. Uh, actually, this is the my might be the first element we introduce here beside we didn't even introduce buttons, did we? Yeah, we didn't have to introduce buttons. But yeah, what we have here is a bunch of columns, but we want to add a control that and that control is called text box where you actually can type stuff in and interact with it so it's really cool so let's um, let's let's do that how about that let's just go, do that okay so between these columns we're gonna do a new element and that element is called input the type of that element is called text box I think it's called text box like that and just let's test that theory real quick yep it works that's the text box right there okay now we need to give the same ID that we give to the column to this because that's where we are gonna write and slam stuff there right that's the second second thing we're gonna do. Uh, perhaps we're gonna give it a nice width as well. Width is equal thirty mm, two hundred pixels. I still don't know, so let's, let's just check. Two hundred. Two hundred sounds good, right? Two hundred sounds great. Okay. Now, we'll see if our application actually works. <laughs> Obviously not, because the whole thing now changed, right? Because this is now, uh, let's make this a little prettier. How about that? Yeah. So now we, we will introduce that when I want to put a value or read a value from a column, we were using text content. Remember that? I think this changes when, when you're working with with an actual textbook. So the value is actually called value. So let's put the default value as zero here. And now I can I'm seeing a zero. That is cool. That is nice. All right. That is very nice. And now let's see what we need to change here, man. The print symbol, and instead of text content, we have to replace it with value, right? And print digit, we're going to replace the result. We're going to keep that. That didn't change. We didn't change that object. We only changed the results, right? So anything that says uh, text content, we change it to value. 
and hopefully that does the trick. 9 plus 9 minus 1 minus 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 
the certain code that we written here, we can enhance it, we can simplify it. But I think it's good to stop here and start moving into a level two and start learning more and more uh, new functionality of JavaScript while building an actual more interesting things like a, a, we're gonna build a game, Alien Invader, uh, and then level two. So that'll be, I think that'll be exciting. So uh, for you guys, if you still wanna continue working on this, feel free to do so. This is the source code. You can change it, you can play with it. There are a lot of things that we can, this is not an optimal code, but it does the job. So you can, you can always change it, make it more better, looks better, change give give change the variable names right do things that you feel you feel more comfortable with the code right you don't have to use the same exact names that I'm using here you can change change it to do whatever you want right as long as you stay consistent obviously and we're gonna in the next episode we're going to introduce CSS clean this up right so there's a lot of things we can we might actually make an eighth episode if you guys really requested it just write down in the comments if you really want another episode we can like do a code cleanup i can i have i have a lot of things to do right we can i have a lot of ideas but yeah that concludes our calculator guys you guys have to be proud of yourselves you built a full-fledged app and learned a language at the same time all right guys you stay awesome Subscribe to iGeometry, where you learn software engineering by example, by actually building something, right? Say awesome. Hey guys, I just want to show you that the app has been that have been we have been working on for for seven episodes actually work on your mobile device. So you just visit that page, and since JavaScript is a native language and works on any mobile device it actually works how about that let's quick equal equal Ooh, yeah yeah works just fine just need to zoom in a bit here but yep cool stuff go build something cool right now with your knowledge right and show us show us all right guys stay awesome Go build something cool today. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from IGM3, where we discuss software engineering by example. And welcome to another JavaScript by example episode. This is episode number eight. We stopped for a while, guys, there, but I'd like to pull, a, pull this uh, series back up. All right, guys, so uh, this is still level one. We're still building the building blocks of our beautiful calculator. Remember, guys, uh, let's go ahead and run this. Uh, just make sure that uh, showing you what, uh, what we have done. Okay, JavaScript by example. Just double click the HTML. And yeah, so we have built this all this concept. We learn how to build uh, basic HTML. And we have written all this code, right, guys? We have written function. The last thing I remember is like uh, building all these get element by ID to get the actual uh, object and add an event so we can click and do something about it. And I want to take uh, we we discussed uh, out of functions and cool other stuff as well. So I want to take this to the slightly ne next level, right? and uh, and talk about arrays and talk about loops and when to use all this cool stuff obviously you have to get and use it but i deliberately written this code in this manner so uh, you actually understand how uh why did we do arrays and loops to begin with right you have to understand the basic the uh, basic reasoning of us doing anything in in life really right you have anything you do you have there must be a reason behind it okay so loops okay before we discuss loops I want to introduce basic CSS right so maybe we're gonna split this episode into two but uh, let's first introduce the CSS right so CSS is stands for cascade styling sheets okay and these 
if you notice in our HTML, it has nothing to do with JavaScript really. But if you notice in our, our JavaScript, there are a lot of repetition here, right? All these things, these properties, right? The width and height, the width, 30, 30, 30, center, 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 center. All of these are repeated if you think about it, right? So you can use CSS to create a quote unquote a style and then assign these styles to your elements and this way you can only change one place instead of changing multiple let me explain so now if you decided to change right like uh the width from 30 to 70 or 50 right you have to go through all of this code and do that change right okay if you use a class a style you can do it one place and it will basically get uh, affected in the entire HTML file. So let's go ahead and introduce that thing. Styles are built in a tag called header. Okay, so we have to build the head. Is it head or header? I forgot. I think it's head. Okay, so you build a head and then you build a style element. Okay, and just by doing that, you can now create a style. Styles right there are a lot of types of styles right but i want to introduce the class style where you want to create a new type of style and you always start this with a dot okay you say dot and then the style name i'm gonna call it symbol because all of our uh digits and buttons are, are symbols i'm gonna call them symbols that's just how you start your symbol uh if you have noticed guys i i'm sorry i did not mention that i switched my uh, editor the text editor to visual studio code i really heavily recommend you using that okay go ahead and now code.visualstudio.com download and install that it changes your life forget about the sublime text that i used to use okay use this instead right it will change your life especially for javascript is so simple okay just go ahead and download that right now before you start coding believe me it will change your life so what i want to do here is i want to introduce a symbol and i the width of this symbol is always 30 and the height is always 30 pixels and i want it to be in the middle so i will use a line uh i think this thing is called text align uh, last and that will be center and that's just the the element that will allow us to do a center element okay now guess what guys all we have to do is just start removing code so I want to remove this part this is all styling and replace it with class equal guess what symbol all right cool sounds good let's go ahead and do it on all of these guys all of them okay all right do that i'm gonna do it on all of them oh, 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 oh what did i do i'm gonna do it on all of them except the equal element right i'm gonna explain why in another, uh, in another video so we'll just do this we're gonna keep the ID because we might we might need use it right again the ID is where we can pull that object and do stuff with it right just do that yeah zero as well call span to sure we can keep that decimal what is decimal that's the dot the dot okay all right so let's just use this all right i'm gonna keep the equal here okay oh you know what let's change the equal i'll i'll tell you later when to uh fix that but now if i do that and then refresh you notice almost nothing changed right it's still my application works nice nine times nine plus one eight did I do minus or 
Yeah, A20. Seems to be working. <laughs> All right. Our application is working. Okay, it's like a slightly cleaner code, I guess, right? It's cleaner. The next thing I want to do is I want to understand. See, I had two functions here. One function called print simple, uh, symbol, and the second one print digit. And the only difference is this if statement where we said if you click the digit zero and the value of zero, avoid adding duplicate zeros. That's what we did. Remember, guys? That's uh, the number zero. We're adding print digit and uh, decimal. We're printing a symbol. But that does not, uh, it's not the same case with the symbol because we don't have a, a zero in the symbol. The symbol is basically is this. That's what I'm referred to as symbol. But now I'm changing all of them. I'm calling them symbols. Okay. So now if you think about it, this is kind of a special case of this, right? So I can actually get rid of this print symbol function and then use print digit or we can just call it print symbol right and then get rid of the print digit altogether cool so now this is my new print symbol function cool but now what should i replace these with simple replace it with symbol symbol replace it with symbol Go ahead and replace all of them. You see where I'm going with that, right? I'm trying to make this as homogeneous as possible because the code starts to repeat itself. If you see a code repeating, that's a sign for a loop. Okay, uh, we might actually do the whole thing in, in one shot. Let's do it. Nine times nine. Things are working. Cool, cool. All right. That's cool. So now, all of this code, I'm getting the number zero just to add an event listener symbol. And then I'm getting the second one. I'm adding the same event listener. All of this code is exactly the same. The only change thing that is changing is actually this, right? This is changing. Hmm. That is very interesting. Except, if you think about it, guys, these are actually different. The clear button has not the same code as this. So, I want to, since it's different, I'm not going to refer it as a symbol. I'm not going to use the class uh, symbol to, de uh, to define the equal and clear. So, let's remove that from equal. That's why I'm going to remove that. Okay, Because I want to be as... as, uh, as consistent as possible okay so we have all this code and we have that this is what i'm gonna do next i'm gonna introduce arrays for you guys what's an array an array is this is how how you do an array in javascript okay first we'll, we'll introduce arrays and then we're gonna take that knowledge and do something with it okay the arrays okay what is arrays an array is this is the notation of an array in JavaScript. So let's create an array. Let's do let uh, array equal this. Okay. And then you put a stuff in this array, right? You put number nine, seven, six, four, three, and that's it. You can build another array B that has apple lemon strawberry this is how I spell strawberry don't judge me guys the English is not my first language right <laughs> okay uh, I'm gonna change it to peach because I don't know if it's that it's the spelling okay so that's like that's the array okay so what's the, what's the idea of having everything into a collection an array of collection you can then apply the loops, okay? So the only reason for to do an array is to do an iterator, to iterate through them, to tell the computer, hey, start from this and go ahead until 
the last element okay so now I'm gonna start coding here just showing you guys what how how arrays work okay so if I do a and I do sub zero which is the index of the first element which is this guy I'm gonna get an alert of nine okay let's do that that's a nine looks good right and if I do alert B sub zero what do you think I'm gonna get Apple right so what what do I get if I do one B of one I'm gonna get lemon okay and what do I get if I do this let I equal zero from start from zero while I is still less than B dot length I plus plus alert B sub I that's how you do a loop essentially and looping will uh, there are multiple ways of doing but this is the easiest for loop right so you start from zero and it will do a conditional check says hey is I less than that length of the B which is three yes zero is less than three let's continue what do you want me to do if it's if it passes that check yes go ahead and execute this okay I'm gonna alert you B sub zero okay so we're gonna get Apple then move to the next loop which does this first increment I by one I plus plus means incremented by one so I becomes one so now do this again don't don't come back here just go here okay so one is one less than three mm-hmm yes it is so okay that passes so go ahead and do this again alert B sub one which is lemon okay and you do this again two 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 is less than that okay so it still passes two is still less than three passes that reaches this show you peach and then increment that becomes three and then check it again is three less than three uh, no i'm sorry so that fails that exit the loop we will not execute that so what we get is apple lemon bitch i'm an bitch <laughs> sorry peach apple lemon peach apple lemon peach got it guys get it cool that's cool okay so that, that's arrays okay i'm gonna keep this for you guys All right uh, again i'm gonna put the code in the description so you don't have to like pause the video if you want to all right simple stuff simple simple stuff okay last thing i want to do is i run to do something very brave i try at least in my life to do something very brave and get rid of this entire code and replace it with loops can I do that uh, I don't know and can you well first we need an array of all these guys okay how do we build an array of all these guys I mean we have all these guys I think right we have all these guys so all we have to do is just build an array of symbols right that's one way of doing it I have another way of doing it but I'm gonna do it in the next episode okay I want to make things simple for you so we can do this do this and then just right num1 num2 num3 we'll start building the array right num6 num7 num8 num 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 and then we're gonna add by the way guys javascript doesn't yell at you when you do this you can do this if you want to and then we do shop and then we do plush we can do malt all of them the same code right as long as they they execute the same code we're we're safe we can do that okay uh, this is num sub right sub plus malt div division 
decimal, yeah, all of that thing. Clear, I don't think clear is one of them. I don't want to three to clear, I want to three clear differently. And this, okay? Something wrong, okay, we forgot a comma. Sounds good, guys, right? Sounds good. Let's do it this way. Yeah, so now I have an array. This is one way of doing an array. Another way of doing an array is to do symbols dot push, and then you just do num zero, and then symbols dot push, and then you do num one, and then symbols dot push. The only reason you do arrays is to save your life and save you a lot of coding. Okay. Sometimes arrays don't work, so you don't have to use them if you want to. Okay. So the first part of this episode, I'm gonna get rid of try to get rid of all this code now. Who can tell me what should I do? Let's comment all this code. Okay. Comment the code basically, just like don't execute it. All right, so for let i equals zero, i while i is less than symbols dot length, i plus plus, what should we do guys? I want to do this is the most common code, right, guys? It's even Visual Studio Code is highlighting it. So I say, hey, guys, that's the same code. Why are you repeating the code? So I want to do boop, do this. But what is this? What is this now? This is symbols sub i dot. Does that make sense, guys? I think it does, right? Very simple stuff. So now we just got rid of all this code. So now we can we can clean up this code a lot, guys. That we um I built this in a, in this way for a reason because this is a beginner's JavaScript. We're building JavaScript by example, right? That's how we learn, man. That's how we learn. We just we don't introduce random JavaScript artifact artifacts and we don't use them. We introduce things that we use in real life. Okay. So let's see if this works. Maybe we'll get some bugs. Okay. This is how you check for bugs, by the way, guys. You go Chrome, more tools, and then you do this. And then if you see red stuff here, that means there are errors. Okay, let's try. Nine times nine. Oh, guys, it's working. I am very happy. It is working. Okay, how about now? See? Division? Ooh, working. Clear. Nine plus parentheses one times nine plus parentheses eight times nine parentheses parentheses. Guys, this is great, right? This is excellent. This is excellente. All right. Okay, I should I should have done. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna stop here. Okay, let you digest this. Arrays, loops, and CSS. The reason I did CSS is in the next episode. And I think some of you already started to gaze as well. I, 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 essentially, the reason I introduced CSS is to, to get rid of the rest of the code. <laughs> to get rid of this code, essentially. And we're going to ask HTML. says, hey, give me an array of all your symbols. And that will give us an array, and this code will remain the same. All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe if you like this video. Uh, all right, guys. Check out uh, check out the other content in this channel. There was a lot of cool stuff, right? And I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from IGM Tree, where we discuss software engineering by example. Welcome to another JavaScript by example uh, series, where we basically have a simple application that we're building from scratch, and we're learning JavaScript in the process. In the last episode, episode number eight, we learned about uh, CSS, implementing CSS in HTML. Not really JavaScript, but it's kind of related. Uh, we learned about loops, and we learned about arrays. And in this episode, I want to take this to the next level and introduce a new function that is in JavaScript, especially running the browsers. And that will 
help us reduce the amount of code and refactor our code and make it much 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 simpler okay so let's go through the code a little, a little bit again okay so what we have here is a bunch of elements right so we have elements and we're going to use we are using get element by id to get basically these elements and then store them into variables using let right let this let then oh, we have all these error so what we did the last episode we group all of these special one of them into an array okay and then what we did is instead of the old way we're just doing add event listener calling the same function we just looped through the array and then called the same function because for the next element just go ahead and add uh, the event lesson which is a click in order to print the symbol on the calculator what i want to do now is even simplify that even more so this symbols array i want i want javascript to give me that without me having to write all that code right so how can i do that okay so let's think about it a little bit, right? So what we did is this number zero, number one, all these digits have something in common. We did that. Remember, let's go to the HTML. What do they have in common? What do you guys see? What do you see they have in common? You figured it out, right? All of them are belonging to the class that is called symbol, right? So if and only if, if I have a function that says, hey, JavaScript, can you give me all elements that has a class symbol and then put them in an array? Imagine, if I have that, then I'm going to give this, right? And, and just like that, I just, I have no use of this anymore okay so that's a trick here so what i want to do here is at least these right number zero one two three four five six and then the the operations in the right p parentheses and the left parentheses okay the clear button and the equal button are not part of the symbol so i'm gonna leave them here okay but pretty much everything else, right? Even the results, if you think about it, the result is not even part of the symbol because results have a special function, okay? What we do with the result, a clear and equal uh, is, is not the same, right? Result is essentially the, uh, we do the f this, uh, we, we essentially calculate the result when we click equal. So we still need this variable somehow. So we're going to keep it. But I'm going to comment out all this code. And then don't, go, don't worry, guys. I'm, I'm going to essentially provide the code for you at the end of the episode. So you can take a look like, like we always do. But uh, what I want to do is also comment out this array. Well, you know what? Let's comment out this. I don't want it. I want. I don't want this anymore. But this symbol, I want all elements that have the class symbol in them, right? Which is this guy. Symbol. So let's see. How can we do that? It is in a document. So in the document, there's a function called get. And instead of one element, there's elements by class name. Right? And then the class name is called symbol. And then just like that, this will return me an array of all the elements that have the class that is equal symbol. That's extra. We should, we should remove it. And then take that element loop through them and then let's add the event handler which is the click on every single element that is a digit or an operation 
So let's see if this works. Remember how to execute that stuff, guys? You go to your terminal, uh, and either in Visual Studio Code, if you go, if you click here, terminal, or you go to the terminal here, you go to the same location essentially, right? And then you do HTTP server, assuming you installed uh, Node uh, Node.js HTTP server, and then you say dot. That will host you in import 8080, and the obviously the the browser uh, the the thing is called calc.html. So let's go ahead and execute that. Uh, HTTP localhost 8080 calc.html. Okay. Let's see if we got the latest code. We just do. That looks like the latest code, right? That's the function that we just added. So it looks good. And let's refresh. And nine times nine. Looks like things are working, guys. All right? It's working. So let's try to clear. It's also working, right? So nine plus times nine equal. Looks like it's good. So let's go ahead and show you what exactly is going on here. So I'm gonna put a debug. I don't know if I showed you debugging here, guys, but the way you do it is you go, I prefer using Chrome for this thing. What you go is you click on this three dots in Chrome, then you go to more tools, and then you go to developer tools. And then when you do developer tools, you click on sources, and then you click on the HTML file. And then just like that, You'll click here, and that will set what we call a breakpoint. Now, if you refresh, the code will get executed, started from the script, do, 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 up until the uh, the code that you break in, and then it will stop until you do something about it. So, and the cool thing about it is, as you start just pan, uh, hovering over these objects, you can see the values of these objects, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and just click this, right? Step over the next function. So just one step, go one step, okay? And instead of executing the whole script, okay? One step versus the whole script. Or you can do it from here, it's up to you, okay? So I just want to step over. Poof, execute that code. And then the reason I did that is because if I hover over the symbols now, look at that. What is this, guys? Zero, one, two. That's an array. That's the same array that we have built, right? It's, except it is, it is much, much, much simpler, okay? And then it is pretty neat that we have that, okay? And then let's go through the loop. Let i equal zero. So the value of i, hopefully, is zero, right? So this is like another way to show you actually how loops works, which is pretty neat, if you ask me. So i, i is zero. So let's step over. This is asking the question: Is i less than symbols dot length, which is eighteen? That's pretty neat, right? So we have eighteen elements. Okay. Is, uh, is zero less than 18? Sure, yeah. So what it does is like step, and then go and execute the code. Take the symbol i with a zero, which happens to be, what is the first one? Class name, we can get the ID here so we can know. The ID is called clear, so the first one is called a clear. And add the click element, which is called print symbol. If you think about it, the clear button, we shouldn't really print that into the screen. Okay, so we need to really remove it as a symbol. It's not really a symbol. So what what happens here is I don't want to confuse you here, but actually we add we it looks like we have added two event listeners for the clear buttons. Okay, but but let's talk about that some other time. Uh, go to the next one. So. You see what, what code is executing? This code is executing now. It says i++, which is add one to i, okay? But i is still zero. But the moment you execute, you go to i, it should say one. Any second now, look at that. i is now one, okay? And then 
we go to this condition is one less than 18 yep sir it is less than 18 so we jump and then says hey give me the first element which happens to be that's how you you highlight this and it will tell you how cool is chrome guys that actually does all that stuff for you uh, okay it's called left p left parentheses and so on you you know the drill right guys so i am going to jump ahead and click a breakpoint here so if i keep doing that it will just keep looping and stepping in the same function and over and over again so if i click this it will jump execute all the code until the next breaking point which is this guy 151 so boom there you go now the clear button which had an event listener i don't know if we see the event listeners here which is the click command i don't think we can on click is that an on click no i don't think we can see the event listeners but regardless right there is an event listener we added that but now we're adding another function remember guys we did that work before okay so we're adding this function that's one function right that's another way of doing it okay and then uh, this will give me the function and then we'll clear that so what i think what happened here is uh the print got executed and then followed up by the clear which is just set it to zero so we didn't feel it all right but the correct way is to remove the symbol from the clear button but go ahead and then obviously the equal do that and then uh, equal will basically execute this function okay so some of you are like hey hey why do you have an e here but you don't have it here it e is actually the uh the event right which which tells you like some useful information like where did you click when when this event occurred which is the click what happened where did you click at what did you click at and then some other information right and you can pretty much replace it with with uh, i can't i can't edit here but you can replace it with 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 what we have here which is essentially i i have i don't care about the arg arguments because i'm not going to use it and then i just want to show you different things here so if you if you if you replace it with this that will work as well because you're not using the arguments essentially so you're good but let's go ahead and execute all the code and then close that and it looks like guys we our code is working okay i'm gonna intentionally keep this episode real light very simple i'll push the latest code uh, episode nine guys uh, let me know if you have any questions if you're interested in this series i'm gonna continue doing it right what exactly did you like more in this series do you like the debugging do you like me to talk about more advanced stuff i'll keep i'll keep stepping in the code and but 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 as you say, can see now the code is much 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 cleaner now okay and uh, i think i can uh, confidently start deleting so let's do that before we push right uh, i'm gonna delete all this code bye i'm gonna delete all this code you can keep it if you want guys right if you want to learn but i don't need it anymore okay you can delete all that code and maybe in the next episode we'll learn about uh, constants right so my code is now much cleaner look at that guys our script is what how many lines it is 30 lines that's not bad less than 30 lines of code and if you remove the new lines you're actually doing much better okay all right guys uh by the way guys you can you can i'll show you some tricks here what is this is this complaining oh that's the old thing that we removed okay if you do that you can just do it in one line if you want to i just wanted to do it in two lines showing you that the different things that you can do in javascript okay guys uh it's pretty neat right okay um I think I'll stop here. I'll push the code. Uh, you can find it in the description. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, really, your questions, I take them and, and make another episode out of, of them because the more questions you ask, the more content you're going to get. All right? So, with that said, 
You guys stay awesome. Check out the other content in this channel if you really enjoy this channel. Hit that like button, right? Hit that subscribe button, right? So I know uh, that helps a lot. You know, you have no idea, guys, how the how much this help uh, tells the uh, YouTube algorithm that hey, this video is useful and it's still bubbling up to the top of the queue at the top of the search results. All right, guys, uh, you guys stay awesome, and I'm gonna see you in the.